Hello guys, welcome back to Hear Me Out the Podcast with your host, I'm Kevin. And this is Quick Truths, aka Juan, aka your podcast favorite podcaster. And today we, we're here. <laughs> we <laughs> have something very special for y'all today. We, we have our very first guest for episode eight. Very first guest, yeah. fan of the podcast, friend of the show, avid listener, avid listener. Every episode. Every episode. Big man, big guy on campus, six foot two, standing at 180 pounds. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. All of that was a lie. Uh, <laughs> my name is Julian, and I have no plugs. I'm not a streamer or anything. <laughs> Talking to the mic, though. Oh, am I? Is this better? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh-huh. like lean in every time you want to talk, so Got we're going to be able to hear you. Got it. But hi, welcome to the podcast. You're our first guest. Does it feel like surreal? Now, tell the audience what it's like being a part of the HMO Productions. Tell them how seamless this whole process is. Tell them how quick and fast we are and how Let fast we set everything up. <laughs> and how easy it is yeah. to, to it just come on and talk about whatever yeah. you want to talk about. I mean, it only took us an hour to get ready so i would say that was pretty seamless i got to watch not only did we walk through the rain to get here we got slapped around by raindrops but yeah. then we had to figure out a way to keep the immersion of the background <laughs> in place dude every single time we're gonna have a new background it's right. gonna be That's something just gonna interesting. be an ongoing joke i actually thought you guys are gonna run out of backgrounds by like episode five no, no, the no, fact no, that no. you guys continue to have a new background it, actually does surprise me. Even if we just shift it over a little bit and add like a little figure or something, something's going to come out of it Like when we're changing it up. I'm a little upset because we had agreed upon this with Kevin that we were not going to mention it. This is the we first were just, time. We were just going to keep rolling with hey. it until someone said something about it. But I guess now no, that They did say something. Ooh. No, no, no. No, yes, they did. Like, he just said it. He no, just no, said no. we were going to run out of background. This is like having like a live audience. You could just hear me and Kevin bicker. Right. I think I was the one that brought it up that you guys have a different background every time. That's what I'm saying. So and somebody then, brought it up. So yeah, perfect. Speaking See. of things people have brought up, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, for everybody that's watching, that's watching all of the stuff on Instagram, on YouTube. Thank you very much for all the support, and for everybody else that's watching, and for whatever reason feels like we're personally attacking you and your family. I don't know what to tell you. It's not that serious. Listen, we literally brought Julian here today. Can you tell everybody that we are poor as well? Yeah, we're all broke as fuck. Okay, I mean, yes. I, I got like a good $200 to my name, and I'm pretty sure I'm still the most well-off between the Dude. three of us. <laughs> Dude, it's just hilarious because these people, right? Like, we, we, we posted a, a reel, right? You may not have seen it. I have not. Uh, well, actually, so I probably have. It was I just don't know. it was just a reel where we were like, "Hear me out, uh, like don't go outside unless you're willing to spend money." Right. And mm-hmm. people wrote whole dissertations like, "Oh, like you're just saying poor people don't exist." Like, bro, the people that this actually d- affects are not angry about it. It's always those people that feel like they need to protect the community. We are a part of the community that you guys are trying to protect. Yeah. I don't know how the message got twisted. The message was supposed to be about people that go outside or go out with friends. And then they're just like, oh, my God, I don't want to spend three dollars or even go for an ice cream or whatever. And then people were giving suggestions that costed way more way like a lot more money than anything we were even thinking about. They'd be like, oh, you could go fishing. You could go like cl- like hiking or whatever. It's like dog, all of that requires equipment. And the, the one yeah. time we actually told somebody, like, how are you paying for that? They were like. A good fifty dollars goes a long way. Like, yeah. weren't you just talking about not having money? Yeah, let me just get my boat that yeah. I definitely have. Let me just take my boat out into the middle of the city and start just driving it. Because yeah. yes, yeah. we live somewhere where a lake is readily available. The algae, of course. the algae-infested lakes of New York. Yeah, yeah. literally and in the fucking like, Pacific River. We're you want to go to the? Why don't you go into like the 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 town? And they gotta be community centers. Like, dog, we live those in co- New York. Those <laughs> cost money too. And the thing is, that that's another thing that pissed me off, right? They're like, they're like, oh, just go to the park. Motherfucker, I am 22 years old. Is yeah. going to the park just to hang out fun? Like, you are a predator. Stop right. going to, what, I'm going to go hang around by the fucking jungle gym? I'm 22. What the fuck am I doing at the jungle gym? Right. There was people saying, like, go for a walk. Walking is free. Like, yeah, I'm going to tell the group chat, like, yo, boys, y'all out for the walk today? <laughs> hey, guys, I told Lincoln just walk around the neighborhood for hours on end and not do anything. We might possibly get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I actually did do that one time with a friend of ours. Uh-huh. We just walked around downtown. I mean, we did end up getting pizza, but like besides that, it was just walking around. It was actually well, like the thing is, right? Yes, it can be fun. Like that suggestion is cool, but like every time, there's no way. There's yeah, absolutely no. no way. No, I'm gonna want food. I'm gonna want like something. Right. It's just that it's costs just, money. 
it's just ridiculous to think that <laughs> like these people like sh- like i don't know man it- it's definitely always the people that are not some of the one of the comments was like oh try growing up poor you guys will learn how to make something out of nothing i'm like i did i can't i, I immigrated I'm from still a, here i immigrated from a third world country this like, makes yeah. it sound like you got out we're still in there bro. <laughs> like good for you i'm happy you living in the suburbs now but we do not like yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you but it's just hilarious like i can't lie it was getting to me until i saw some of those comments i was like there's no way never mind yeah i'm over it <laughs> the thing is so like i've done internet shit for a long time and i've read very mean comments for a long time so i'm just like whatever i know these people don't know what the fuck they're talking about but it's just so funny. Someone commented like, this is the most cap opinion I've ever heard in any podcast ever. Y'all just film shit to post and get a reaction. I'm like, bro, I didn't even think this was going to get a reaction. <laughs> I didn't think this was a big deal. That TikTok, yeah. like, it blew up. Is it our, like, the highest one we have right now? No, no I think we got it's another our biggest one after real. that. Yeah. Our biggest, yeah, no, no, it's the second biggest reel. Yeah, but then I was like, oh, I saw it was like, yay, we're getting views until, like, the comments started rolling in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, You were like, oh, my God, happened? the comment section is so full. I can't wait to... <laughs> Like, <laughs> literally the Pandora's bro. box open and we're not even like contra- like we don't even if you listen to our podcast like actually we don't talk about controversial shit yeah, really like, or yeah. like if we do we have like we have <laughs> mild takes sometimes <laughs> like we talked about race and religion but I wasn't over here like all Hispanic people should die that was such a funny episode to me because I was like the episode before that was so like lighthearted lighthearted yeah and then the next episode you guys were like heavy handedly just moving on to the next topic you were like so race so religion so politics. I was like, what the fuck is this? I was like, <laughs> never let them know your next move. Yeah. Dude, we just wanted to get the bad people out immediately. Like we just yeah, we just right. wanted people to know our stance out of the rip. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> let's they're gonna, they're gonna pull out those clips and be like, This you? Absolutely. Yeah, that's twelve me. years later being like it, it, it's just funny you. I, like even me saying like all hispanics should die like someone's gonna clip that out of context 20 years from now and be like oh my god look at this white man I, saying all hispanic people should die and i'm gonna be like you guys know i'm like part of that community like hey guys i'm a hispanic <laughs> man I, I i i'm from uruguay you know mm. but nonetheless you know moving on moving yeah. on thank just, you for the support you know thank we, you we for the views yeah. man yeah, like besides them 200k views on instagram is kind of crazy for like on one eight day? episodes no no, no well like 200k total. in a week we oh, did yeah, 200 000 we, views in a week which is pretty actually nuts, actually that's nuts. Insane. Yeah. yeah but like y'all are watching but not following come on that's an issue <laughs> tell, a, tell a friend to tell a friend tell your mom tell your grandma we have we have a grandma watching oh and she loves the podcast <laughs> my girlfriend's grandma shout out Inez Guerrero. Shout out. Don't yeah. give her govern. You are you are the king of doxing people. Last last podcast you said my address. And no, I did it. No, and, I did just it. give her social security number two while you're at it. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, what is They're not gonna get her, bro. They're okay. not coming after her. Okay, whatever. Regardless. Shout out I'm Inez. So Muchas gracias por mirar el podcast. You know what's crazy? If they look at any comments, they will see the name. Bam! Stop. Right back Yo, you are the worst. <laughs> I I you know, it's in the it's in the handle. We're going to get her on the her. podcast. Right. Inés, si, si usted quiere venir al, al podcast con, con mi, mi amigo Kevin, venga y, y te tratamos she bien. She speaks English. Oh, fuck. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. Inés, if you... <laughs> Who's really the problematic one? I'm racist, man. I think all the Hispanic <laughs> people don't talk English. We're I'm to sorry. a roaring start here. Yeah. Okay, but moving on. Thank you for the support. Uh, <laughs> since we're on the topic of money, Julian. We were, yeah. You're a newly college graduate. Mm-hmm. Two of us. Two of us. Two of us. Two of us. Don't discredit yourself. But this is yourself. This We're is, talking about you. We, about I talk enough about myself. Yeah. So, you know, tell us something. Uh, your major, right. major pivotal points in college. Um, what made you choose your major? What made you be the man you are standing before us today? We could go back because you all went to high school together. So we could go we far did. back. Or we can, you know, dig a little deeper into the now. So what, where, where do you want to begin? Where did your livelihood start where did it end where did you become a man where did you not where did you lose self-hope where did you lose all hope where, where did, did you it begin? all start <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for him to i'm like do I have to answer all of those when did your life in come order. crashing in to order, an order, end? by the way yeah, yeah, raise a finger i was born <laughs> <laughs> i mean so i okay so i graduated with a degree in biology nice which, okay. by the way there was actually some really funny um I guess not drama, but more like controversy in my college, like my senior year, because a lot of students who were like newly uh, entering the college, I went to TCNJ College in New Jersey. So a lot of the newer biology graduates or majors, rather, they were coming in and they were doing an AB degree. There's two types of, I don't know how it is for other sciences, but there's an AB and a BS degree. Mm-hmm. AB, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. AB is basically the easier degree. I mean, it's still a biology degree, but there's like a lot of classes. You don't need to take physics. You don't need to do organic chemistry. So it's like, 
yeah, you degree, you you graduated with biology, but it's like it's only biology. So like, let me can I ask you a question. Mm, I'm yeah, yeah. to off. Do you think other degrees are easier than yours? Oh, a thousand percent. Is that a take you have? That's yeah. a scary take, you know, because I know some people might be upset about that. No, but is biology no. the hardest science? I don't think biology. Okay. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> yeah. So I will say this: biology is without a doubt one of the hardest majors. No contest. And I was always upfront about that. Like some people would come up to me and they'd be like, "Oh my god, I." Oh right, people would like come up. <laughs> like I'd be talking to like other no, students. You, ta- you talk loud enough that yeah. you don't have to be right on top of it. Kevin does. Like I would talk Sad. to other students who are like, "Oh man, I have to write like." this two-page script and then act it out and i'm over here like yeah well i need to make crystals i i'm working over here with acid bases i had a student in my lab class he was my lab partner his face like it didn't melt but like he got a serious like he got a burn on his face from acid from dissolved acid or from evaporated acid and i'm like this shit is hard like (laughs) because biology is hard but i think and one of my teachers in high school told us the probably the hardest major is chemistry Mm, I think at the time, like in 2016, she said that she had looked it up. 52% of students who were in the chemistry major either dropped out of college or switched majors. Uh, I can I can believe that. At, when I was studying at Boston University the first year, the very first class you take, like whether you're doing engineering, whether mm-hmm. you're doing like any type of science, is um, Chem chemistry. 101. Mm-hmm. I took and, chemistry for engineers. Yeah, yeah. and that was the Gen Chem like. That was the weed out class. Yeah. yeah. General chemistry. Like, that's where, like, everybody, yeah. I'm going to go into pre med. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Gone. They switched over to business, yeah. to, to communications, uh, and they were having a breeze. And <laughs> let me tell you, I stuck it out for chemistry. I got straight C's in chemistry. Oh, yeah. That I was too. Chemistry, <laughs> chemistry was the only class that I got C's in in, in college. So when you, when, when you are talking to someone who's in college and they're doing chemistry, please support them like if they say that they're struggling in chemistry don't hit them with the like get a tutor or do better chemistry's fucking hard and hey, even when chemi- you're trying your best you will still probably not do well there are some people who are just gifted in chemistry and they right. just get it but i can't look at little dots on my fucking paper and just be like three so electrons. this moves there and that moves there i'm like no yeah Fuck, shout out yo wild. the infamous dan shout out he helped me make it through chemistry because oh, yeah. i was like yeah this shit is whack and he was like no this is easy like Nah. Like Dan is the type of person, at least in school, where he was like, "This is this is so easy. You just I do hate, this, this, and this." I love Dan, but I hate the, I hate those people, bro. We used to take an exam in college, and we used to have like a huge group chat, right, with like all the engineering majors, everybody who was like in the same field as you, right? Mm-hmm. And motherfuckers after the exam will put in the chat like, "Oh, that shit was mad easy." Son, I was over here sweating my ass off the whole exam, nah. knowing I failed that. Yeah, shit. you can't believe them. You, some people, not Dan, but some people were like, "Yo, that shit was easy, right? That shit was so light." Just to come back, like, I don't know how I got a thirty-five. Son, yeah. That shit used to <laughs> piss me off. Oh, bro. yeah, but I think biology is really hard because at least when you're doing your general degree, and I'm not sure if this is true for other majors, uh-huh. but when you're doing your general biology degree, like your bachelor's, they make you do like all sorts of biology. Because I told my advisor from the start, I was like, I want to, like, study viruses in the future. And he was like, well, that's too bad because you're still going to do plant biology. You're going to do entomology. You're going to do chemistry. You're going to do physics. You're going to do statistics. I was like... Wait, what if you did want to go into, like, something specific like that, like viruses? Is that, like, a master's thing? That's like thing? a master's thing, yeah. Oh, that's that that's what that's what the case is for a lot of stuff. Like, you yeah. do your general, like, understanding in undergrad... And then for your master's, that's when you do your specification. Yeah. That's why I'm not surprised that even people who are, like, in fucking, like, English classes still have to take chemistry. Because they're just, yeah. like, I think that's their last chance to have you be, like, are you sure you want to do that? Because it's kind of like, like, let's say you go in for, to school for English, but then you really enjoy, like, math. Uh-huh. You wouldn't have known if they, all, if they let you sequester yourself to English. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think okay. that the first, like, maybe the first semester of the first year is about, like, this is last call to decide that you actually want to do this shit. Because once you become a junior, you can't change your major. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that kind of helped you out, right? Because I know you, you took a, um, an ASL class. I did. I did. Yeah. Well, that was, was that because of the requirements language. or was that because yeah, that was a requirement. You, you chose to? That was a requirement. So, so, so a third, a third level language was a requirement. I don't know if that's true for all majors. Not mine. Yeah, so I had two semesters. Yeah, so yeah. so third level just means you have to do three classes of it. I could have done, and this is my dedication to sign language. For all the deaf listeners out there, I know you can't hear me, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, but I, well, I, I care about you. Shout out to the deaf listeners. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the deaf listeners. Can you do "Hear Me Out" by uh, with uh, sign language, please? Uh, I would just probably say like "Listen," which is. 
Damn. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, pay attention, like, pay attention means, like, that. But uh-huh. if you want someone to, like, listen to me, then you'll be like... Okay, for the visual watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's grabbing two fingers what and then <laughs> dragging them to his... Yeah. To That's his, our real like, for the week. That's yeah. our real for the week, just... Right, so what I was going to say, for real, though, is that, like, I was really devoted to learning sign language, and mm-hmm. so I was actually running out of time, because by the time I decided to take a language, I had already done two semesters of just three classes because of COVID. I was lazy. Mm-hmm. Bad idea. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm doing sign language. So I did a winter course to keep up, and I did my three semesters. Sign language was probably one of the most fun non-science classes I took. Probably my favorite non-science class, mm-hmm. for real. And, like, mm-hmm. I don't remember all of it. I remember a lot of it, but, like, I still remember my favorite signs. What are they? What are they? All right, I'm going to give you three. My first is, my favorite of all time sign is jail, which is, <laughs> that shit cracks me up. I feel like time. Wolverine doing yeah. that shit. <laughs> and then my second favorite is meaning, like okay. the meaning of a word, which is. Let me see that. Can you, can you describe like what you're doing, like with your hands? So like people that are listening yeah, on like, Spotify. No, I know, but like there's people that like aren't like watching it. So like, can They're you like. Just, explain, oh, like, so right, 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 right. So for jail, the sign is like, you would do like the number four for both hands cross the fingers together to like simulate like a lattice like a and then put it in front of your face. <laughs> yeah. Like a little fence. Meaning is like one, it's like rock, paper, scissors. Like one hand is paper, one hand is scissors. Mm-hmm. And then the scissors you like jab into your palm. And then twist I love at the that. Same yeah, time. twist it. You have to twist? Yeah. Is there like a different meaning if you just like, I actually don't know. Um, <laughs> you learn it up. American Sign Language. Yeah. Oh, and then my third favorite, my third favorite is condom, which is, oh, <laughs> you yeah. do a little, yeah, whoop. like pointer your finger, finger up with the other pointer finger. Yeah, pointer finger up. The other pointer is like in a, a curve, curve, and okay. then you just kind of like whoop, like put it over it, like you're shielding. Yeah, I'll never need that one. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. You go to that. you go to Walmart, and you're like, like need, where is it? Need. Yeah. But I have a question for you, then, yeah. Julian. Are you the type of person that will like tell people their major is easy? Or are you more like you hear somebody complaining and you're like, it can't be that bad? I have. I've been um. A perpetrator of the first. Okay. Whereas I remember I was hanging out with someone who was like two years younger than me, uh, but he was like, um, I think he was an English major. So I'm a senior. I've been through the ringer. I'm battered, bruised, beaten, defeated. Right. You know what I mean? I have all my battle scars. And he's over here complaining about like, oh God, like this paper I have to write is so hard. And I was like, what do you know about struggle? Like, I felt bad about it because he, he kind of had the defensive like, well, my major is still hard, even if it's not as hard as yours. But I guess I, I my instinct was just to be like, stop fucking complaining. Because, That's like, fair. I don't know. I feel like probably the worst thing about science is honestly what you do outside of class. Mm-hmm. There are so many fucking things you need to do for class outside. Like, my senior year was nuts. Every yeah. fucking class I had, I had to do shit for homework or for a project. I think I told you guys, for my entomology class, I had to catch live bugs oh, I and that. make I a collection. He said that somebody caught you like on the road trying to yeah, scoop I was, up. This is a true story. I had um one of my classmates from sign language class. I'm just gonna say her first name, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. She's Shout probably not Brooke. watching. Hi Brooke. Hi, Brooke. I love Brooke though. Um, she was like, "Were you digging in the field yesterday?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> and she was like, "I was driving in my car, and this is true. There's like a, a field next to the path that people can take to get into campus." She's like, "I was driving into campus from practice, and I saw you digging in the dirt." And I was like, I saw a beetle. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't get the beetle though. That's so funny. Uh, that's, beetles that's a... beetles and bees were the hardest insects to catch. Oh no, I can't do bees. Yeah, I, beetles, I wouldn't try to catch either of them to be well, honest. Well I had a net. I had a fish net. Oh, okay. not, not uh, a fish net, a, a bug net. Like very right. animal crossing. So like I would see a bug and then I was just like Living the Animal Crossing dream. Yeah. Right? Oh butterflies. I never caught a butterfly. Oh. I've I've tried to catch maybe six of them and Did they you all get points away. off for that? No. The only way that you would get points off... Actually, there was really no way to get points off unless the insect that you presented was, like, mutilated. Wait, mm. did they have to be alive? No, they had to be dead, but you couldn't squish the bug and be like, I right. promise this was a butterfly. Like, <laughs> you had, so we would have, like, a, a jar. Like, yeah, we'd have, like, a... insects and be like, this was for sure a ladybug. Yeah, like, it's, like, <laughs> absolutely... You can't tell what it is. And I'm like, it was an ant. Like, no. So we had, like, a jar full of um, ethyl acetate, which is, like, mm-hmm. a... It's, like, low-grade cyanide. Right, right, right. You catch the bug. Mind you, they're in the net, alive, kicking, trying to break free. You have to find a way to shove them into the jar and seal it before they, like, fly or hop out. And then over time, they just suffocate and die. Damn. Poor guys. <laughs> it, it was very they sad. I, that. I didn't like that project at all, to be honest. I remember the first class, though. We were um, Our teacher was like, so this is how you catch it. And literally, I saw, like, a wasp on the floor, and I just went, <laughs> and I caught it. I was like, like that? <laughs> he didn't even say shit. <laughs> bro, I was just built for it, bro. Impressed. And then I like, caught... 
He's showing up. And then I caught another one, and I gave it to someone else. I probably gave more insects to people than I actually kept for myself. That's I had 30 crazy. bugs by the end of the yeah, day. There's no insane. white of insects. Look, I'm yeah. literally wearing a grumpy shirt today, guys. For you who can't see. He's actually, yeah, he's actually been mild-tempered today. You're not grumpy at all. No, I'm in such a good mood. I'm such a happy-go-lucky right. go, go guy. <laughs> Absolutely <Yeah>. not fuming. <laughs> the behind the scenes. <laughs> but no, I, uh, just going back on to like, like being like the perpetrator the perpetrator oh, right. of saying those things where you're like oh you know your major is easy yeah. i used to think the same way like personally i used to think the same way like mm-hmm. oh these motherfuckers like are posting their straight a's like i'm an engineering like they don't understand like this shit is fucking hard like because in my head like i felt like i was failing in my own like majors you mm-hmm. know what i mean like i was doing well i did fine in college but in my head a little bit i was like seeing these people like put their good grades on the internet and seeing these things and you know as much as you don't want to compare yourself to other people it happens you know like sometimes yeah. it happens especially in a big ass school yeah <laughs> especially when like your peers are like performing really well and you think they're doing like way better than they actually are because like my senior year when we came back from covid and stuff and like i was actually like talking to people and like you know i started like talking about people's grades and the gpas and stuff and i was like oh we all have similar gpas like i would i thought you guys were all like super geniuses and i was just the only fucking idiot but in reality no one's an idiot it's just fucking hard yeah. But to my point, sorry, I didn't even get to like my <laughs> nah, actual it's, point. It's, fine. it's like, can you be mad that they're saying their major is hard when they chose something that they thought they were good at? Um, because I used to think the same way, but I chose this, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I can't be mad at other people for choosing things they're more interested in. Even though I think, you know, engineering is hard, I also mm-hmm. think their majors might be hard because the way I'm very good at like math and analytical skills and things like that, other people might be really good at reading and writing mm-hmm. and better than me at reading and writing. So whereas I may have struggled in some of my engineering classes or I did well in some of my engineering classes, I may have done poorly in my reading and writing classes, whereas they will do great in those classes and mm-hmm. they will do poorly in engineering. Yeah. I mean, everything comes naturally to everyone in some way. Like, yeah. remember in high school, like, you really struggled with English. Oh, not because yeah, you, still... you were bad at it, because you didn't like it. No, I hate it. I hated English. So it was I hard to get inspired. English. That's that's one thing that you'll hear me say, oh, it was your worst subject, English. I yeah. hated it. I remember, I remember in sophomore year of high school, we had this teacher. I'm not going to say a name. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, no. Sophomore, uh, yeah, sophomore <laughs> year. Sophomore year. Okay. Um, yeah, there's two say, options. I don't know what the name I'm going to just give a random name. Gretchen. You feel me? So Wait, Gretchen, can you just give the first letter of the last name? B. Yeah, there was O and B. There was O and B. So Gretchen, you Gretchen. know what? Lovely lady. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> she she had this thing where Wait, like... Wait, B? Yeah. Was a lady? Yeah, it was a lady. Sophomore year? Yeah. Regardless. Um, well, uh, she, was super, we'll she was super nice. Um, like, to the point where... She told us a story about how, like, when she was little, she, like, struggled with, like, uh, handing in homework and stuff. So, like, she would be like, you know what? As long as it gets to me before the semester, uh, like, before the quarter ends or whatever, like, it's good. I'll grade it. It's fine. Right. But, oh, my God. She tried to keep energy up. And I was just, I, like, this is the part where I was like, yo, English is not for me. Because I remember we watched, I think, The Truman Show. Mm. You remember watching The Truman Show? I Did you ever I, watch I, The Truman the, Show? The movie, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Truman Show, the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah the I know Show, the movie. I know what you mean for the audience that doesn't know. <laughs> Great movie. Yeah. Highly movie, recommended if movie. people want to go uh, watch it. But then afterwards, we were trying to talk about whatever the topic was. See, like, just how bad it was. I don't remember what we were talking about. But then I remember raising my hand. She'd be like, how do you feel? And I was like, to be honest, I don't really know what to think right now. I'm confused. And she was like, yes, exactly. And, and then I just looked over to my friend. I was like, yo. There's no yeah. way I just got a good grade for that. <laughs> <laughs> she she should have been an acting teacher. Yeah. For those I, of you who don't know, The Truman Show is about you know, Jim Carrey stars in it. It's about this guy who, from birth, they took him from his mother and they put him in like a fake town, and the rest of the world is basically watching his life as if it were a reality TV show. So those are for those of you that don't yeah. know. Great movie. Yeah. Great but, movie. So my whole point in saying that was that some things are just gonna come because then you are also a sentinel at calculus, yeah, and no uh, one understood why. Demon. Like literally. He was okay. Like I would demon. say. Demon. He was okay. I, I remember being like almost jealous because I was like I thought I was really good at math, and then I was like struggling to get like a C, and Kevin just banged out everything with Yo, an A. Numbers are for me. Bro. Exactly. I so, got an A in that class too. No, you know what? No, yeah. crazy. I feel like it's to an extent because I remember I remember in college there was this the one girl that I know that was in my statistics class because because when I transferred because I transferred from BU to NJIT for a year um, and then 
I had all my math credits already done, but then for whatever reason, NJIT didn't want to accept it. So I like, I like sweet talked my counselor, like, yo, please, I'm not trying to take fucking statistics, like a four credit statistics class. Like I already did that shit. So then she made me go. She was all right. You know what? If you take this one credit statistics class, which is like one hour and it was super easy. Um, Oh, Pat. It was like really based on like fractions and stuff. So I was like, this is free. I didn't even go to class for real. But then <laughs> there was this one girl in there when I went to take the exam who actually like, completely bombed the exam. She was like, this is my third time taking this class. God, I can't take a it one again. credit course? <laughs> yeah, that's what oh, I was like, nah. yo. Like, she got to drop out. Yeah, I don't think you're built <laughs> yeah, for she, college. She got to go. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like a sophomore and she was like a junior. I was like, man, that means you've been trying since your first year. That's, that's too much. That's yeah, too much. I can't. Yeah, yeah no. So. Again, back to the point. <laughs> so, like, I think one thing that people maybe forget is that biology and chemistry are probably some of the most practically oriented majors. I mean, some majors, I'm sure, like, engineering, they probably had you build stuff. Or if you do coding classes or computer science, they're going to have you code. Robotics was a right? fun class. Yeah, robotics, shit like that. But, like, a lot of those classes, you have to be able to, like, do what you're learning. Right. And I feel like there are a lot of majors where you, you don't. That's like, fair. like for example, if you're a business major, they don't fucking give you a business to run and be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if they don't give you the keys to a restaurant and be like, run this. Okay. So, like, I you like get what I'm saying? Actually, actually, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually a good, good way to thing. put it. So, like, there are some majors where, like, yes, and I'm not saying, like, if you're a business, I'm not saying if you're a business major, you got A's because you're a business major. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying but is... I've seen your classes. Uh, I've seen your classes. No, what I'm saying... Put in a hear me out format, Julie. I'll do it later. Don't worry. <laughs> I, don't hear me out yet. Don't hear me? No, but it's like... So, like, that's the thing is, like, you have to respect... And, like, the people who are saying their classes are hard would never be like, oh, biology is so easy. So, it's not like people were disrespecting me. I just think that they didn't understand the depth of the comparison I was making. Like, when I say my class is harder than yours... I'm not saying that to be shallow. I'm saying that because my class is harder than yours because oh, you just need to know the vocabulary and then like take a test on like what is a profit, what is a loss. And meanwhile, I have to fucking learn about like, you know what I mean? Like why, like how do uh, <laughs> different blood types interact with each other? Why, why if you're type A, can I as a type O like not give to you or take from you or whatever? I have to know that beef. and I have to fucking apply that shit. My first lab for my senior year was to play like was to experiment with fake blood right and see like i would like mix blood types together and then i would have to determine what types of blood were like we didn't know what they were like that's the shit we're doing a lot of the classes it's just like oh you learn something you take a test on it it's must it's memory profit minus loss is revenue exactly yeah. <laughs> so it's like <clears throat> there's a very big difference and obviously this is true there's a difference between book smart and like practicals right the practicality of it so I think that when people complain about, like, especially the sciences and they have, like, lab classes and, like, out-of-class experiments, you got to respect that. If they say their shit is hard, it's because it is. Right. It's just so time-consuming. Like, I know it my is. first semester, I had 18 credits, and people were like, I posted my schedule, and people were like, yo, what are you doing? You're going to yeah. kill yourself. And I was like, this is what they gave me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I had no choice. Every block is just filled from, like, 8 a.m. Yeah. all the way to, like, 7 p.m. because of lab classes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I hate it. Like, the worst part about sciences for me was the fact that you had to go to labs. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. The labs were high-key boring. I actually like the labs. The problem I have with labs is that now that I'm trying to find – well, I have a job. But, like, trying to find a job, mm -hmm. they wouldn't respect your experience in the lab. Right. Like, listen – I've done dissections. <laughs> oh, I'm getting to it. Be quiet. Listen. I'm getting to it. I've done dissections. I've worked with bacteria. I fucking, like, I've dissected hearts. No, Julian talks loud enough where it's Is fine. It good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You Sorry. just don't talk I, I'm loud. the only issue. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the, yeah. I'm, I'm in the red <laughs> daily. I'm basically producer and co-host because I, I look at this yeah, all the time. Yeah, I'm Mike Island. 2. You're Mike 3. You're yeah. beneath me. No. Yeah, like I've done dissections. I've worked with bacteria. I fucking raised plants. I've fucking caught live. I've worked with live specimens, insects. I've done cell culturing. But then when you're trying to find a job, it's like, well, you don't have any experience, motherfucker. Yes, I do. Yeah. And then you want to try to hire me with my degree and my four years of lab. Well, two because of COVID. Uh, and you want to pay me like eighteen an hour? That's just so That's actually hear me so out. Disrespectful. Hear me out. If you are trying to apply, or if you're trying to hire start people... Over, start over, start oh, yeah, over. Start over. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> My first time. No, <laughs> hey, if you listen, I had to do that like five times for one of my... Yeah, I remember that. I was like, all good. Not the listeners <laughs> having to fucking watch the, the bloopers. <laughs> the bloopers. Yeah. Not the right, bloopers. Right, hear me out. Seriously, hear me out. If you're trying to hire someone, 
and you're trying to charge them less than they can be making working at fucking Target, your business needs to be shut down. I agree. There's no reason with an engineering degree y'all trying to pay me nineteen fifty an hour. Dead bro. fucking ass. I was making fifteen dollars, almost sixteen, working at McDonald's. I was like, there's no reason that with a degree I'm making two dollars more an hour at this fucking job. I mean, I didn't take it. Yo, right. the recruiters must think we're Ash catching from Pokemon, but <laughs> ten years old with twenty years of Pokemon yeah. battling experience. I remember. <laughs> you, I remember on like your first or second episode, you referenced me talking about um like the first job interview that I had was on the phone after I graduated college. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember telling them I was like, oh, I was thinking I should get like twenty three an hour, and they said. Well, we start at 18. That's I said crazy. respectfully, and I just hung up. I was like, no, we're yeah. not doing 18. No, 18. Yeah. I, w- even, I was even when you look at like Indeed or LinkedIn, it'll be like master's degree required and starting at like 15 an hour. Yeah, or like 50,000 like, a year. Yeah, like you're ridiculous. Listen, bro. You have like, a, fucking hear tweaking. me out. Hear me out. How the fuck am I supposed to have 15 years of experience after I just finished my undergrad? It does not make sense. I'm 22 years old. They thought I was working with electronics since I was five years old. (laughs) And my thing is, I don't even mind having to accrue the experience, but make it livable for me. Yeah. Like I can't like the, the, the time of paying your dues and earning experience can't be at the cost of fucking survival. Yeah. I'm lucky enough to have a house. Like my mom, like we still, I still have my mom and stuff like that. So like, I'm not in dire need of like a high income, Mm -hmm. but like, I still want to be my own person. Right. You know what I mean? Like I still want to make enough money to like, do fun shit and like go out you know what i mean like that's wild i mean the job that i landed now it starts off at 22 but they said that like with every like promotion and they come pretty quickly Mm -hmm. like with the promotions you get more money so like i'm down to do that but like yeah starting trying to fucking get people with a degree and you're trying to start them off minimum wage like 18 19 an hour that is that's criminal. That's crime. Dude, yeah. this one. I don't know how they expect me to go into work and be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to walk in there, and if you say hi to me, I'm punching you in the throat. It doesn't even make sense. Like, these companies expect so much from their workers, but then compensate them so little and overwork the fuck out of them. Even, like, ah, oh, I can't. <laughs> when I get a new job, I'll, I'll, I'll go into a lot of <laughs> right. shit that a lot of things do. Well, my old job, I got to say, when I had my the job from before, when I worked at the, the, the textile lab, mm-hmm. I was so spoiled, bro. They treated you good? They treated me nice. <laughs> Listen, I had high pay. I mean, I and keep in mind, I'm speaking in past tense for a reason. <laughs> so I had a high pay. The, the, um, the people were so nice. And a lot of times, especially towards the plot twist, I got fired. But towards the end of my time there, I was not working, which I think, well, I, it's not that I wasn't working and that's why they fired me. They fired me because there was nothing for me to do. Right, right, right. So, like, they were just like, you know, we're paying you, like, all this money and you don't really have to do anything. Right. I remember I would deadass, like, every Wednesday, I would be, like, in a laundry room waiting for shit to wash. And I'm just, like, listening to the podcast or something. I'm just like, <laughs> and this is me for four hours. But are, are you the type of person that can not sit still? Like, me personally, oh. like, I can't. Like, I, I was at work, you know, that, you know, unfortunately, they passed me up for a promotion at my job, right? And in my head, I really wanted to just be like, fuck this place. I fuck this company. I'm, I'm very, I've said this on the podcast. Like I'm very pro fuck this job. Yeah. But it's so hard for me to just sit there and do nothing. Like I was talking to one of my supervisors and I was just telling him like, dude, like I remember when they told me that they weren't promoting me, I sat out there and did nothing for, for Hold on. I still make- In theory, I sat out there and did nothing <laughs> for, for an hour. Reasons, this for is an a hour, job, yes. Yeah. For legal reasons. For legal reasons. Yeah. Um, We're cutting that out. And, no, no, I keep it out. <laughs> yeah. the fuck. Uh, but then, like, I started working it because, like, I just can't, like, I can't be in the workplace and do absolutely nothing. I can't. I've always been this way. Um, I don't know, like, I, I, I would say it's a good work ethic. I think I have an okay work ethic in terms of like when I'm actually in a workplace. I think when applying to schools, like when applying it to school. Um, I definitely had it easier in like middle school and high school. Like I was like, you know, like in middle school, middle school and high school, if you're just like naturally, like not naturally, but like, if you're just like smart and you could retain a little bit of information, you will do well. You will graduate top of your class. Like you will do fine in high school without putting in that extra mile of work. That's not the same in college. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like you have to put in those extra hours in college. But as I was saying, like I was just sitting at work and I was like, bro, like I can't just sit here and do nothing. And so I just started working, working, working. I was telling one of my supervisors, and I was telling him, I was like, I was like, yo, like, I say his name was Bob. I was like, Bob, like, you don't know how much I wish I could just sit there and do nothing. Like, I told this to, to his face, like, mind you, it was like my boss, basically. Like, I told him to his face, I was like, you don't understand, like, how badly I want to just go out there and do nothing because you guys, like, made me upset. Mm. But I just, he's like, one, that's not the type of guy you are. And I was like, it's not the type of guy I am. Like, I can't just sit there and not work if I'm at work. Especially, like, with my job, 
I don't have my phone on me. I don't have anything on me. So, like, if I'm not doing work, I'm literally just staring at the ceiling. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I've worked, like, both hourly paid jobs and, like, what I'm working now is commission-based with uh-huh. um, video editing. I have to say that working hourly is by far way better than working commission-based or, like, by, like, by project. Right. Just because, like, at work, right, like, per hour... Um, you can work as slow as you want. If work is getting done, at, at the end of the day, you finish mm-hmm. your hours, you go home. With commission-based, the faster you work, the faster you get paid. Right. But, like, with hourly, I had a situation like that where uh, it was a summer job I had, uh, I think, in, like, 2018, I think, 2019, uh, where I was working as, like, a, a, te- a technician assembler, basically just, like, making PCs and stuff. I was working at this company where we uh, they made, like... Um, security system for like airports like metal detectors you want to uh, you want to name drop them or, or no yeah, free yeah, cloud? i might i might because they don't <laughs> exist no more <laughs> oh no <laughs> well like the now name changed now like, that's what happened. um but yeah like the first week i was zooming through everything i was like wow it, they gave me like all this pile of junk they were like if you could take all this apart like take out like they thought i was gonna be there the whole summer just taking apart pcs like getting parts that work getting parts that like throwing away parts that don't work um and I did it in like a week and they were like, wow, congrats. And then I was like, yeah. And then, but that was like my job, like to take apart like old stuff and like recover what could be recovered or whatever. And then they wanted me to go to a different location and do something else. But I was getting paid $12 an hour. Oh yeah. And I was like, that is not part of my like description. It was like, well, do you want to go home? I was like, there's nothing for me to do. <laughs> and, but then I was like, so then to counteract that, they gave me busy work. Like, like my floor manager like he gave me he he like threw a bunch of like like bolts and stuff into like a big container and he was like i need you to organize this yeah i need you to (laughs) organize it by size and it was like one fourth three eighths five eighths or whatever and i was like there is no way i did it and i made that last three months that's a that's the thing about like working those types of jobs you should work what they pay you for Mm -hmm. but when you are that type of person that will do things fast just because not even because you want to like work less but just because you're already at work and you just want to work it's hard to just do the bare minimum like especially it's it's just hard like it's it's not easy i know some people are different and i wish i could just say like i can sit there and watch youtube videos all day i i I made it i made it last like i would put on shows and go through like all the seasons of of how i met your mother all the seasons of whatever show i was watching uh-huh. But, like, it was to an extent where, like, damn, we, it's just lunch. Yeah. We still got, like, four <laughs> or five hours left. I used to work for, uh, like, this trucking company. Like, a, it was, like, a logistics company. And I worked as a builder. So, I would go in, like, at 6 p.m. And we would only leave once the job was done. So, like, I would get out of there, like, 2, 3 in the morning. Sometimes maybe 4 or 5 in the morning. Because we wouldn't stop working until all the bills were, like, scanned in. And we had, like, a team in the Philippines that would scan in the bills. And Philippines are 12 hours ahead of uh, behind us. So they were they would work until like six in the morning and we wouldn't get out. Uh, they would work until six p.m. and we wouldn't get out sometimes till six in the morning. But the thing is, you couldn't leave until it was done. And I had coworkers that would just like sit there and not do anything. <laughs> Why and, do you want to be here? <laughs> and that's the thing. Like I would just be in there and do mad like mad bills. Like I would be in there and do like hundreds on hundreds on hundreds of bills. Some people would be in there and do like twenty. Wait, and it's like, like we're you... getting paid the same. Yeah, I'm not getting paid by bill. I'm getting paid hourly. But like, if is that like going into overtime? Like when you leave, I mean, or like does I, it like get capped at a point? And it's like mm-hmm. you're not, you're still not done. Like, what are you doing? Nah, you just work until it's done. You like you'll like never it? go until because like there's a morning group of people that actually do other shit. But like you, we never worked until the other people came in. Like that was never a thing that happened. But one summer, I remember I stayed there until six thirty in the morning. Like from six, I worked a twelve hour shift from six p.m. to six a.m. Criminal. Yeah, and I was making thirteen an hour. Yeah, you know, you know what's crazy about that job? I asked for thirteen, they were like, "We'll give it to you," and they gave me twelve seventy five. Oh. And when I went to come I was like, "You told me I was gonna get 13 It was like, "That's basically thirteen It was like, "It's twenty five cents," and I was like, "I would exactly not them. like give me my twenty five cents." At that point, like it, it was so hard to find like a good paying job because I don't even think McDonald's was paying like fifteen an hour at that point, and I did not want to do it. like I I've tried know. to avoid any like serving or like customer like dealing with customers customer everything. facing. Like people are dumb. Yeah. Like it's, it's just it's just oh, like a thing and God. i'm not oh you into were the, you yeah, exactly exactly and the horror stories i've heard from you tell at mcdonald's have like oh, i've avoided God. anything from working like retail from working like a, a, a <laughs> fast food place i've found 
all our to- all alternatives and like that was the that was the alternative God, how Christ. much did you make at mcdonald's i started so when i started working at mcdonald's it was going into junior year okay uh, so high two, school? Two, yeah 2016 uh-huh. i started okay so summer of 2016 I made eight thirty eight an oh hour. Oh my gosh. Eight dollars and thirty eight cents an they hour. Round that up to fifty? Oh, I mean I eventually got to forty six. Nice. Damn. That was pretty cool. Huge. Eight cents up. Yeah. So uh um, <laughs> bought himself a new coat with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I mean, for a sixteen year old, eight thirty eight on the weekends, I mean, you know, what are you buying that you need more than that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like shit happened to me that I was like, This is not worth eight thirty eight an hour. Like, I remember being 16 years old being threatened by someone because of the price of his food. Like, I remember, I will quote him. It was a man who ordered, it was him and his son. And he ordered his food. He didn't really like the price. And I was just like, sir, I can't change the price. This was actually probably a little later. Maybe when I was like 17, 18. But I remember, it was still minimum wage. And he was, and he goes to the waiting side of the line. Mind you, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Like, right. we close in an hour. I don't want problems. Right. And I just see this man go to his son and he whispers, you see him? On the street, I kill faggots like that. Damn, I know that is. Insane. That's exactly. Can, can, what, can, can we can we make the premise that that you, you can say that word? I can say that. I, oh yeah, let's just full disclosure. I'm a homosexual. I'm allowed to say that word. <laughs> I don't want you to get like, 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 yeah, it's like a yo, crazy story. But I I just wanted the audience to know. I didn't want them to get riled up. So no. I just wanted you to be. So he said that, and I mean, I have an inkling that he's not because he has a biological son. Right. So he can't say that word. I can't. I have gay friends. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could. So we could say that. Shit. Yeah. We're, we're friends with Jordan. Friend. No, 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 I don't even want to joke about not. that. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. So that's exactly what he said, and I remember. I mean, he didn't. Obviously, he didn't say it to me. He whispered it to yeah, his son. Yeah. But I was like, first of all, your son is no more than six. Right. Let's not talk to your son about killing people. And then the second thing is just like, dude, it was like six dollars. I'm like, you're tweaking for $6? And you got, like, a Happy Meal and a McDouble. Like, why are you tweaking? Bro, I worked at a wedding venue, right? So I was a server at a wedding venue when I was 19. So this was three years ago. Uh, In 2019, I worked at a wedding venue. uh, Made $11 an hour. The the job itself was fine. The pay was too little. The people, like, my coworkers were all cool. My managers were fucking annoying. But that just goes with most jobs. Mm -hmm. And the worst interaction I ever had. Oh, my God, bro. So, like, it's a wedding, right? So, you're not paying for the food. Like, unless you're the parents of the family. Like, unless you're the family, you're not paying for this wedding. Mm. So, there's no reason to be rude to the wait staff. There's no reason to be an asshole. Because you're not paying for any of this. This is all free. You're here mm. to just drink and have a good time. You're at your friend's wedding. So, I'm, like, walking around picking up the salad plates, right? Because salad was done. If you the salad is done, you know, you pick up the plates. This dude hadn't touched his salad. He's been sitting there for, mind you, we put out the salad for, like, 45 minutes. So, like, you can eat your salad within 45 minutes. You know what I mean? So I'm like going around, like I'm asking people, oh, you're done with your salad? You're done with your salad? So I'm picking up the plates, right? Putting them, you know, on my little tray. And I go to him, I was like, are you done with your salad? And he just like ignored me. So I was like, okay, that means like I could just go ahead. When I, so pretend you're out reaching for a plate, Julian. Can you do the other one so I don't have to reach over the mic? So like, let's pretend you're grabbing a, a plate, right? He grabbed me like this. He was like, he was like, don't fucking touch my salad plate. And I was like, and I fucking like snatched my arm so hard. I was like, don't ever fucking touch. And I'm not a scary guy, mind you. I'm not intimidated by any means. I'm like tall, but that's it. You know, I'm like a thin, the lanky guy. The one time he wasn't afraid of customer service. So I, but the thing is like, like, dude, you're at it. Like I had never been treated like that because I work at a wedding venue. You know what I mean? It's not like I work at a fast food place that like I'm even like interacting with money. When it's like money involved and shit, like, oh, that's a whole different thing. But I'm not even like charging you. Like I'm working this your table for free. You're not even tipping me. Yeah. Like most people don't even tip at weddings. Like which is crazy. Tip at fucking weddings, please do because those people do not make enough money. Please tip at weddings. I know you might think it's like only for the bar, but please tip your servers. But yeah, them over grab me, and I, I snatch my hand. I was like, don't ever fucking touch me again. And like, mind you, this is like, like one of the important tables. But I saw, and then like I told my manager, I was like, that guy fucking touches me again. Like, like we're gonna have a fucking problem. <laughs> And then my manager goes up to him. He's like, yo, don't be touching my workers like that. Like, that's not fun. My manager stood up for me. Like, so I, I appreciated that. Oh, shout but, out to my manager. But, yeah, shout yeah. out to my man. I mean, he was the only young manager. Like, we had three major D's, right, because it's a wedding. So you have someone that runs the wedding. Um, two of them were, like, these two old people. Like, this one old white woman who was just rude as shit all the time. Oh, so if her nephew watches this, I'm sorry because I used to work with him too. But she was just <laughs> rude and mean. And on my first day there, my first ever day there, <laughs> I fucking so so at the end of the night right they have someone stand by the door so no one walks out with our glasses right because like first of all you can't take liquor out of a place that's selling liquor because they will lose their liquor license 
And second of all, those are our glasses. Like, those are glasses that we use. So I'm standing by the door, like, just with a little tray, right? Just, like, walking, watching guests pass by. Like, hey, uh, do you have a glass? Like, no, okay, perfect, keep going. So there's these guests standing by one of our staircases. And on our staircases, we had flower vases. But those flower vases were ours. They weren't, like, part of the party. And these old people started, like, taking out flowers from it. So then my fucking mean-ass manager comes downstairs. She's like, she's like, who the fuck took roses? Mind you, this was the night, like, the party was ending, but there were still guests there. Uh -huh. She was like, who the fuck took these flowers? She was like, did you fucking, like, mind you, my first day, she comes down at me, did you fucking let them take these fucking flowers? And I was like, I wasn't aware. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I literally told her, I was like, I'm not, I'm not a security guard. Like, <laughs> my third day out here. Like, like, it was my <laughs> I was like, I'm not a security guard. She was like, oh. Oh, you're not supposed to let them take the fucking flowers, our fucking flowers, now we have to fucking replace them. And I was just like, damn, like, damn. chill the fuck out. Like, it's not even that deep. She like, it's not coming out. old people. So that's what I literally <laughs> told Like, one time I literally told her, I was like, like, one time, so I used to set up, like, the dessert, and we used to tell, the, like, the guests, like, don't touch the dessert until the, the like, the people getting married come out because they need to take pictures and shit or whatever. And then one time someone took, like, a little kid took, like, a thing. And my manager comes to me like, yo, you're supposed to tell him not to. And I was like, you want me to punch a little kid in the face? Like, don't touch that fucking <laughs> chocolate covered strawberry? Like, you are you learn. out of here? Son. Oh, my God, yeah. bro. They really let the, the job description take over their humanity. Like, you got to relax. Like, when people, I mean, actually, I kind of have, like, a, a floop -a loop with my perspective on asking for too much sauce at restaurants. Oh, my God. What? Hear me okay, out. This so, is a hear me out, I feel like. Uh, I mean, okay, well, before, let me preface it by saying... I have no problem giving people whatever sauce they want, but hear me out. You don't need, if you have a four piece chicken nugget, you don't need four cups of sauce. Speak for yourself, bro. You don't know how much no. I be saucing. No, I, I go through one sauce for 20 nuggets. No, so like, uh, <laughs> exactly. Like, listen, I would, get, I don't like, know why they give me like, 30. I would get a 10 piece for my breaks and I would use at most two cups. I would get people who would order like a small fry and like a six piece nugget. I would give them like a pack, like two packs of ketchup, and then whatever sauce they ordered. They'd be like, "I need like three more sweet and sour's." And I used to be of the of the camp of like, just give it to them. Like, right, you know right. what I mean? Like, we have billions of them in the back. Who cares? But then, like, as I got older, that became irritating because I'm like, <laughs> "No, you don't." Because like these people start to feel entitled. Like if you if I told them, "Oh, the most I can give you is two. Because sometimes like I would give them the sauce if I was by myself, and if a manager was there, I had to give them what was required, right. and then they would give me an attitude like. Like, oh, really? You can't give me one more? And I was just like, I'm sorry, I can't. But as I got older, I'm like, no, you deadass don't need five different sauces for a small fry. Oh, so, yeah, so then eventually it got to a point where if I was in the drive-thru, motherfuckers would be like, can I get, like, two more ranches? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> You're such an <laughs> asshole. Give them a fucking ranch. Cause I, no, because I especially hate the game of, I hate the game of, like, put your hand out, right? This would be me. I'd give them two sauces and they'd be like, go, oh, I'm going to need more than that. i give them one more. Like, a lot more. And I'm like, <laughs> bitch, like, you didn't even Don't have play fries. Don't be play like, the game. Don't play the game. Yeah, like, people would order, like, a burger and then still be like, oh, I need ranch. No, you don't. Yeah, I feel like I've had that experience where sometimes I only get two, and it's never been an issue. It but hasn't. When they, but, what, like, I feel like that's just better because when they give me, like, ten different sauces, they're all going to the garbage. That's exactly. That's where they're going. And that's exactly what ends up happening. Well, actually, no, for the drive-thru, I don't know where you're going with your sauce, but, like, People Listen, keep that shit, bro. You yeah. put it in your fucking refrigerator and you fucking. Oh, to be fair, I do do that. Like, if you else. look at if you look in the in the drawer in my kitchen, in, not in our kitchen. No, you're good. I was just turning. Yeah, in the dining room, we have like a drawer full of a sauces. Sauce drawers. A sauce drawer. Yeah, drawers. but my thing is, you're not gonna come here and scalp me <laughs> in front of my manager for your little sauce drawer. Like, you gotta fucking have the discipline. Like, if I give you two sauces, and for a ten piece. Use one cup, save the other for later, bitch, because I'm not giving you four. You are. This is the worst take I've ever heard on this podcast. Like, this is actually the most controversial. Well, no, because I used to be of the of the like here, just give them whatever. But I'm like, you don't need that. You don't. <laughs> Somebody be tripping. Plus, most of those nuggets. sauces you can get much higher quality in much higher quantity for very cheap. But you worked at McDonald's. Four years. That sweet and sour sauce at McDonald's is different. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't like the sweet and sour. That sweet and I sour. Actually, I lie. My oh. favorite is the bar buffalo. The buffalo. I mean, I've tried mid, it, mid. but like. Eh, and the signature eh, sauce. Signature sauce they don't do anymore, but signature sauce was my shit. I never tried. It had a pink package. Sauce. It was like the pink top. You know, they all have different colors. Pink top. It was so good. They had a sandwich where the sauce was on it. 
Chef's yeah. kiss. It was I, so need, I need some statistics. I need to know who gives out more sauces on a yearly basis. Is it McDonald's or Chinese restaurants? Because uh, Chinese <laughs> restaurants are the same. They give me all the soy sauce no. in China. You know and they, they give me one hot sauce pack. No, you it's know what they'll do? They give you like 11 duck sauces. Like you ever like order <laughs> a Chinese, you ever order from my, and I like duck sauce, so I'm okay with that. But you ever like, well, you ever order for pickup, you go to pick yeah. it up, you look in the bag and there's like 14 different, I'm like, I'm not using any of this shit. I don't even yeah. like the sauces from like what? Chinese places. I don't like soy, soy sauce. sauce. No. I love soy sauce. I don't like soy we, sauce. We have a soy sauce, sauce like jar at home. <laughs> Y'all need to grow up for sauce. real. Nah, bro, mixing it in with some, with no. some stir fry is crazy. Nah. I mean, obviously for stir fry, like I like teriyaki, which yeah. soy sauce is the base for it. But like soy sauce on its own, like if you no, have. No, just, you're just drinking salt. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like. <laughs> Like, if you have, like, sweet and sour um, chicken and you're just pouring soy sauce on it, you have a mental health issue. No, no, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, that double wet. <laughs> That's <laughs> double a problem. Yeah, you need to seek <laughs> you professional need assistance. help. Yeah. But you need assistance. Yeah. The Chinese will <laughs> help you. Yeah. Nah, but, like, with some four-piece wings or six-piece wings with some pork fried rice, dropping that soy sauce or duck sauce on it, perfection, actually. Not for me. Not nah. for me. I, yeah, I can't. You see. raw. You go raw with the pork fried rice. You even you have raw pork fried rice. I 100 percent raw dog my pork fried rice. That's crazy. You I don't mean, raw dog pork fried. Pork fried no. rice already has stuff in it. Pork so fried rice is already I, seasoned. I, I, I use actually. I actually use duck sauce for my own rice. Like oh I eat pork God. fried rice, whatever. I eat it without any kind of sauce. But right. the sauce, I will save like when I make my own white rice. Then I'll add duck sauce. It you is white what? rice with duck sauce. I've and that's never actually had good. duck sauce, actually. When you eat a hot dog, do you put ketchup or mayonnaise on it? Ketchup. Mayonnaise, no. Ketchup. ketchup, yeah. Mustard, I've tried. Hear me out. Here we go. <laughs> hot dogs are not supposed to have any condiments. That's not true. This is the craziest take I've ever You're heard. not yeah. supposed Yo, to put any you are condiments. Who the con- you, you are who the comments we're talking about, by the way. Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, condiments go on hot dogs. No, ketchup they don't. Ketchup with hot dogs no, go don't. insane. No, I don't. I eat my hot dogs raw. Pause, but it's true. Uh-huh. Like I, I really don't like. I didn't start using condiments until like I was like 18 years old. But like I would eat my burgers with no condiments, nothing, just plain burger and bread. I'd eat my hot dog, straight hot dog and bun, no condiments, nothing, just straight I, vibes. Wait. This is this is this is crazy. I keep doing <laughs> I keep doing like the office takes to the camera. Like, I'm like, this is wild. Like, this I is keep, like a real thing. Though. I keep going like. No, if like it, you hear this shit. My only issue with like hot dogs is I'll take pieces of bread out. I'm like, this is so much bread for this tiny ass. Hot sausage, and it's like you never do that. You don't be taking off the bread. You just take be out the, the bread. Yeah, like ripping pieces. No, of bread off. usually the oh. usually the the usually the wiener's too big for the. Oh god. Hey yo. <laughs> no, usually the hot dog <laughs> is too big for the bun. So yeah, like for hey, me, it's yo. like I got, even then. Oh even come then, on. No, like like Costco hot dogs, delicious. I love Costco hot dogs. I don't know if y'all have had a Costco hot never. dogs. I like Costco hot dogs. But like even then, I like take pieces of bread out. Like it's too much bread. No. If, if you're on a date, do you change the way you eat? No. I don't think so. Like at least like at the I, beginning of the I relationship. Eat, I don't think I eat dirty, so no. I don't think I've ever been on like a, a food date when like courting someone. I mean I've only had one relationship which I'm currently in. We never went out to a restaurant to like get to know each other. We kind it was kinda like love on first sight. So like, Oh my god. Wow. Now you've talked well, too I far can't from relate. Me. I dude, I haven't <laughs> been in a relationship in uh, am, I, am I rehashing old wounds? No, eight, you're eight good. Eight episodes in and the DMs are piling yeah, up. Yeah, the DMs y'all, are still dry as shit. Y'all could be, y'all could be in there. But honestly, yeah. like, I don't know. I, I feel like when you're courting a lady or or a man, a whatever, gentleman. you're a you're <laughs> non-binary partner. You're your partner. The person a you person. are trying. A person you you're are trying someone. to court. Uh-huh. Hopefully uh-huh. they are a person. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the first thing. Like, I usually go for, like, a little coffee date or something. You guys like, aren't... I know my dad has had a story. Oh, like you guys are... Yo, I hate y'all because y'all in relationships for too long. Y'all don't understand the, the, the intricacies of the dating no, process. my dad would, would agree with you because I know he... Because he came from a very poor background. And, like, the first time he went on a date with this with this, uh, with this girl, like, she he went out with her family. Crazy. And... Right on the first day, <laughs> just meet the whole family. Yeah, I'm pretty uh-uh. sure it was, it was either Terrible family idea. or a group of friends. I don't know, but regardless, he was the poorest one out of them. And like they had a specific way to eat, like, uh, like a fried egg. Like they cut out the yolk and eat the whole yolk. Like they don't uh-huh. let it like open and then like bathe in the rice. That's how I eat my egg. Like sure. I let the yolk mix with the yeah yeah like hard yolk or like soft yolk because I like so, soft whatever yolk. like cooked yolk at least. I never had a hard like a boiled egg with rice. No, 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 not, not, it's not boiled. Oh, fried yeah, egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah like there. a fried egg with yeah, rice. Yeah. Like, but I fuck with that. At like he didn't like they had this specific like I th- I'm pretty sure they were from like a rich like you know high class uh-huh. and they had a specific way to eat egg where they take out the yolk and eat the yolk whole. But Ew. he cut it and it spilt 
on the rice and he just like got embarrassed because everybody just made fun of him for like Aww. being like like not having manners or like being you know basically making fun that he was poor he didn't know he was like i don't i don't know this was the like, etiquette stupid as fuck but right like i know i battled with him throughout like my whole life because he was like you need to learn etiquette because what if this happens to you and i was like dog that was a that was a, a outlier. <laughs> that was like, a unique experience. Nobody cared if I used the second fork or the first fork. How <laughs> how long did it take for you to introduce your partner to your parents, or like vice versa, uh, for both of you? Because um, I'm single as shit. Yeah, I, I think I, for me, I know for me right away. I was like, yeah, I got a girlfriend. Now. <laughs> <laughs> did, you actually, did you tell them about the multiple attempts? Yeah, I did. They know. <laughs> but I, I've talked about it from before, like. My girlfriend's rejected me for for different oh reasons. You came, you came into the house. You said third time's the charm, yeah, bitches. Yeah, I was like, yo, y'all don't know. You're like, mom and dad. <laughs> finally, this girl yeah. I've been pursuing no, for I months. I told my mom and my dad. I actually got upset because I didn't. He was like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, you know, I'm gonna tell my mom first, first, like, because at the point, like, my dad was all about like like studying, studying, studying. So I was like, I don't even think you would care. Yeah. So like, that's a different story. But like, yeah. <laughs> but I remember for her, she was like, kind of like, I wouldn't say embarrassed, but she was like scared of what her parents would think. Cause like they had told her that like oh you can't date until you're 18 and she oh thought I thought you were gonna say she couldn't date Hispanic men no, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's Hispanic yes um, it was a joke guys yeah. come on it was a joke but stay away like, from them I know for stay her, away from those people it took yeah. around like a month for her to tell like her, her, her family but then after that I was like kind of like all right because I had already known them they were oh I, I kind of mess with him I think. Like, I'm dry, yeah, I'll fuck with him yeah he he valid <laughs> but yeah, he's okay yeah. I know for me I was like yo mom. Guess what happened? <laughs> what, go ahead. When when you when did you oh, introduce well, your pa- mean, or your part your boyfriend to boyfriend. your parents or you to your parents' boyfriend um, or you to your boyfriend's parents? <laughs> I mean, okay. Well, his, his parental situation is different, indiscussable. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay we'll okay. say that. Um, we'll, but for we'll me, fly over it. Yeah, but for me, um, he actually met my family pretty early, but not as a partner mm-hmm. because we spent. So we met. Oh, God. Maybe, like, when the pandemic started. We so, first, 2020. Yeah, sometime around March of 2020, right? That's Which literally is, when yeah, quarantine like started. Exactly. Like, the beginning of <laughs> that's quarantine. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, actually, no. That's when we wanted to hang out together. So, we had oh, met before okay, then. Okay, okay. Probably during, like, um, probably during like the, the summer vacation out of college proceeding. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Okay. So, maybe, uh, like, after after the summer of freshman year, I think. Uh, right. Freshman of... So, okay. So, like, 28... 2019. 2019. Yeah. 2019 yep. So summer of 2019 is when we met. And we went to Hibachi. It was me and him, my brother, and his fiance. Who, well, now his fiance. They were dating at the time. Yeah. And by the way, my boyfriend and my brother's girlfriend are best friends. Okay. So they have like the joke that they're brother fuckers. I just think that's really fucking funny. That <laughs> is a crazy. That is that's a, a wild thing. fucking title, but I think that's really funny. <laughs> that is a crazy. Yeah. So that's the, that's, the, that's the like friend square that we have here. So okay. it's me and my brother. And we're dating two best friends. They're best okay. friends to each other. They're brother fuckers. I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Please stop referring to them as the <laughs> brother fuckers. So, so, yeah, that's the friend square that we have. So we had already met. Um, my brother and his fiance were trying to get me and him together. But we didn't really want that. We didn't want it to be forced on us. So it was like, you know, we're going to be friends, but we're going to be friends on our terms. We're just going to be platonic friends. You know what I mean? But then maybe like six months later, and this is, and then it took six, you know, it took a few months for him to be like, we should hang out. We were like, okay, let's hang out in March. Like around. Oh, birthday. like, like alone. Yeah. Mm. Like, let's hang out together alone in March. Oh. Then the pandemic hit. Okay. So we pushed it back all the way to May. When it was May, we went to a, no, we, I just went to his apartment. Oh. Yeah. Cause cool. he lives by himself. Oh. I mean, <laughs> okay. I mean. It's more or less what it sounds like, but like that's how it started. <laughs> okay. I have a so, question. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't, was that your first boyfriend? Yeah. This is oh, the first, was your first time I've one? ever dated oh. in my life. And that's that was the first, the thing. like ever, like just partner in general. Yes. That's cool. Ever. Okay. And that's the thing because one of the reasons that we took so long, because remember, it took us a while to even get to meet each other, and then after that first meeting in May, it took us another six months to become official. Okay. So we'd known each other for a year before we started dating. Right. So the reason that it took so long was because I was very opposed to dating. Okay. I was very, I just didn't like the idea of commitment. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I was like a hoe or anything. I just don't like commitment. Okay. It wasn't really my thing. I was like, I'm 18. Why am I going to devote my life to one person? You know what I mean? And shut out all other options. Right. I just wasn't feeling that. I don't know what was different about him, but like that's, that feeling sort of changed. Um, but yeah, then come around October, 
I and people always think that it was him who pitched like the proposal to start dating. But it was oh, I thought me. you were you were gonna tell me you're engaged right no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I just Shut I just revealed up. my ring. I've had a ring the whole time. Like, no, I'm like we've been friends for can we, for can a we year say, now. Can we say his can we say his first name? Is that yeah, I mean oh, yeah. I mean he's gonna watch. Hi, yeah. Vinny. Shout Love out, you. Vinny. Hi, yeah. Vinny. Nice to meet you. you did. Yeah. You conquered Julian. Yeah, you conquered that hill. <laughs> he's very proud of it. Um, but yeah, so then it was October 29th is when I said be my boyfriend and you know what his response was can no. we wait two days I want our anniversary to be Halloween that's oh, hilarious wow, that's, that's funny so our anniversary is <laughs> Halloween because I had to wait two fucking days to make it official anyways how was uh, that introduction between cause that was your first partner ever first partner ever so and like, also you, I wasn't out oh you weren't even out I wasn't out so it was a closeted oh, relationship okay so and did you he was out for years at the time okay how did, I was not. how did that work with the dynamic oh a lot of sneaking <laughs> what is this Yo, ring? I talk? just got jump scared. Okay, yeah, that's my that's my alarm. It's already seven. I oh, didn't know. Yeah, crazy. so um, what was I gonna say? Right. So he was out since he was like sixteen. He's a year older than us. He's twenty three. We're twenty two. Right. Um, I was not out yet. I was out to like you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys known about it since I was like seventeen, and that's a whole fucking like mm-hmm. we can get into that in a minute. But like, so we spent about a month. Like, well, actually, before that, during the, like, talking phase, I guess, like, that six-month period where we were just just friends, I would go to over his apartment, like, once, twice a week. And I remember my brother and his girlfriend actually lived with us at the time, and they would be like, every time Julian goes to Vinny's house and comes back, he's very, very happy. Hey. And I remember... My, <laughs> he's and glowing. Vinny, yeah, and, he, and he told me, and I remember, they were like, they were like, he, like, he shaves every time he's about to go, like, his facial hair, like, he gets really, like primmed up for what's supposed to just be like a casual hangout but did your like your brother you weren't out to your brother even like your family at all mm, i think i was oh okay. to my brother it was my parents that were the last people to like find mm, out actually the, ugh, i mean okay so my mom has like 10 siblings and okay. they all have kids like at least three kids each so it's like huge family right wow. huge so that was a so it was only really my siblings i knew um but yeah so eventually the gig was up the jig was up Right. And I remember it was maybe like a week before Thanksgiving. We told them like officially we were like, oh, by the way, me and Vinny are dating, whatever. You told this to your brother. My brother. We okay. called him from Vinny's apartment. Okay. And we were like, do we tell them? And we were like, yeah, we tell them. So okay. we did. And yeah, then, we- yeah, I know. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? On Thanksgiving, I'm going to tell mom. I was like, on Thanksgiving, I'm going to tell mom. So a month after, basically. Almost. A month after we got together. Yeah. And then I How remember. Was that? was that like super, like, did it feel awkward to you or was it like. It was scary. Because I was in one of those families. I mean, we weren't like a super religious nut family, like Mormons or anything. But it was like, like you know, it was one. Of, I had one of those parents who was like being gay is a sin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Was that like both your parents? Both. Okay. Because they were both Christian. Okay. And that was like a large part of the the, the problem the influence. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm actually still Christian, but like, like I'm not one of those people who's like Christianity fucked me up and ruined my life. Like right. that's not it. I was just like, I see where their misguided ideas were, and they're past it now. Mm-hmm. So I have nothing. I have no grudge to bear against Christianity, but I will say that that was what influenced their feelings. So there was no room to talk about it. Um, up until Thanksgiving? Or are you up saying- until th- I mean, there was even at Thanksgiving, there was no room to talk. It. I just, I just forced it in. Like you just yelled it out loud or something? No. So I wanted to do So what was happening was we were in the middle of a huge family dynamic shift. So we had like a bit of a odd cast of people at Thanksgiving. It wasn't really the nuclear family. It was a few friends, um, you know, just some, some family members, some friends. Right. Uh, and I remember I wanted to say it during the dinner, but the problem was that some of the people that were there hadn't been in the family very long. So you didn't want to like give them I that information. Not even that. I didn't want to put my mom on the spot in front of people who like barely knew her because mm-hmm. that, that could have seriously influenced her reaction to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's you know what I mean? Like yeah. I wanted to give her the space to react authentically. And yeah. she, you can't do that when you have to save face for people who are new to the family. Right, 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 right. 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 You know? That's a valid point. So, and I remember, uh, I did tell my brother and his fiance about it. I was like, I'm going to tell her on Thanksgiving. And she, the fiance was really excited for me to tell her at the dinner. And then they ended up leaving and she was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. And I was like, I just couldn't <laughs> do it in front of you guys. So after everyone left, very shortly after everyone left, I remember I can actually, oh God. Was your, uh, was your boyfriend there? He was there. It was oh, me okay. and him and my mom at the table. Mom was cleaning up. And I remember I was so, Was oh, he just God. like standing behind you no no he was sitting it, it was like this so like i was sitting here he would be sitting in front of me and mom was sitting here oh, to my right y'all, y'all, y'all okay. it's a big like table walking up to her and just like <laughs> no we were just walking up to her holding hands no we still sat at the table oh, 
And I remember my mom was cleaning up. She was like, I'm about to go to bed, you know, whatever. And I remember I was very nervous. I was like, Mom, can you sit down for a second? And then she was just like, is this an important topic? I was like, yeah. Like, you have to okay. imagine, like, of course. I, I'm that, playing that, it up that's now. That's actually, like, like crazy. Like, I'm panicking because, remember, there was never an inkling of a suggestion that, that they'd be okay it. with this. Oh. oh okay. I thought you were going to say, okay, yeah. Like, I remember leading up to it. I remember telling Vinny, I was like, if I have to, like, fight for this relationship, I'm going to because I'm telling her. And I'm right. not, you know what I mean? I'm not breaking up with you if they don't like it. So I remember being like, I did a lot of, like, tapping the table because she sat, she sat down and I just went, like, yeah. and I, like, I, I, yeah. I, I like, looked at Vinny. I was like, uh, uh. It's, it's definitely, like, stuff like, like, that was, like, when I, like, tried, it's, it's not the same. It's, like, completely different situation. Yeah. Like, when I told my parents, like. Like just scary topics, like I'm leaving college to pursue something. I oh don't yeah, know, and stuff like that. It was the same way, like yeah, like it's like, like it's there. You can't but get it, it out. It, yeah, like, come it, out. it would be so liberating to say it, but you're so afraid of the repercussions. Yeah. So I remember just, I remember I was just there and I was just like, like looking at Vinny, like <laughs> <laughs> say the shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, so then, yeah. But then I was just like, me and Vinny are dating. Okay. And that so conversation, hmm? it did manage that like, you just, you just like. I just said it. Oh, I just okay, said yeah. it. I was like, me and Vinny are dating. Well, she, did she have like a like a like a visceral react, like a knee jerk reaction, or was mm-hmm. it more like a? I, I think it helps that she was kind of tired. Like okay, the day was, yeah. it was late in the night, so I think she was just kind of like, okay. She was like, oh, she said okay. okay. And she was like, okay, but oh, nice. I will say, and I credit her very much. I mean, now she and Vinny are like super close. She loves Vinny, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that any like hump she had to go over, she's over it. Okay. But like. I remember very honestly, she said, she was like, I support you. I support who you date. She was like, but there's going to be a part of me that's not comfortable with this. And I was like, I can respect the honesty. Even though that kind of breaks my heart a little bit, I was like, I can respect the honesty. Right. But we're about to be two years in, and there's like no inkling left in me that she's like not okay yeah. with it. Especially now that like she sees the relationship is serious. You know, it's uh, not like, like a phase. I'm, I'm happy that it like there wasn't like a crazy like reaction like at least she was like trying to be a supportive mom yeah. even though like she might not necessarily like agree with it or not now that she does into the mic oh, I, I ain't even the mic no, I'm basically just, like making out with it sorry right. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's I feel like that's how every like parent should be about mm-hmm. anything like, like even yeah. if you don't agree like there's no reason for you to just like go all out and just start yelling or like yeah. throwing your ideals at I, like your child i have a question for you mm-hmm. if, if you don't feel comfortable answering be <laughs> like juan this is a okay. terrible question okay. you know what what would you say to the people that say being gay is a choice rather than an innate feeling right because when someone comes like no one comes out as straight right mm-hmm. but when someone is in a like a heterosexual relationship it's never questioned no one's ever like okay mm-hmm. like no one gives it Why a weird like eye this? yeah but yeah. like what would you say to the people that might say Oh, being gay is like a choice. Like you, you choose to like who you like. But realistically, even from my own, per- I'll let you answer. Sorry, I'm just gonna say no, like okay. from my own like personal perspective. Like I never chose to like women. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like I like women. And that's really and, all it is. Yeah, and it's it was never like a visceral like it was never like a a day when I woke up and I was like. <laughs> Like, it's not like choosing an outfit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't wake up and choose one day. Okay. Women today. I'm going yeah, to like women today. Like, no, right. it's just growing up, I've always just been attracted to women. And right. I assume that being gay is the same way or, you know, being. My very simple way. response to that would be if being gay was a choice, there'd be a lot less gay people in the world. Why do you say that? Because it's a struggle. Right. To okay. be gay. Because, I mean, full disclosure, it's not a choice. <laughs> right. I thought it was. I didn't think it was a choice, but I thought it was like a, a, swi- a, fl- a switch, like a flip. You know what I mean? But like. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, eventually I'll like girls. And then I was like, 17, 18, still liking boys. 19, 20, still liking boys. 21, I'm in a relationship with one. I was like, okay, well, this is permanent. But like, How okay. was your experience, like, after coming out? Did you feel like your life, like, kind of got a little harder? Like, now that you're like, okay, now I have to tell people I'm gay. Like, dynamics with family. Is that even um, something you tell people? Like, I feel okay. like... No, so no, here's, a, here's like, actually... So there's like... Oh. But like, it must be different, like... Like, at least, like, even for yourself to feel like, oh, I'm trapped, like, basically mm-hmm. living a lie, like, well, I'm not, like, I'm not gay, but then, like, when you, like, finally, like, living how you are. So, let me give you a full rundown, right? So, this is, Sorry. so this is, like, a very heavy, ha- I'm gonna, full disclosure, this is gonna be a very heavy-handed topic, so, like, 
I hope y'all are ready for some, like some real shit. And full I'm disclosure, me and Kevin are ignorant as shit. So yeah, 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 yeah. and Julian yeah. is our friend. <laughs> so like yeah, like I'm only saying this because I trust these two. I I've I have a great group of friends. I mean, there's multiple queer people in our group. I'm not the only one. So like it's also pretty easy to like you know what I mean. But like okay, let me give you a, a rundown, right? So when I was like 14, I was pretty sure I was straight. Like okay. there was really no question about it, right? Um, 15 is when things got a little weird because that was the first time I thought I might have had a boy crush. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to name drop, but it was someone who we went to high school with, and he was one of the OGs, like 7th and 8th grade. Okay. I think I know who. So I'll tell you after. But, um, <laughs> I think I know who. <laughs> you want to whisper it? No, I'm kidding. I already know. Yeah, rumors, yeah, rumors so, travel. So that was maybe when I was like 15. But mind you, I was in the band at the time, and... This was Ooh. really like no shut up. That's this the, is that's the I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying I'm in the band because the, 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 the band was like the only real like solidified friend group I had. I had like here and there friends like you know Sophia and like they were like my friend, but that wasn't a group. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that was the band was the only friend group I had. That's fair. Yeah. And so a lot of the a lot of me in my early years of high school was trying to put on a face of straightness, which is weird because I didn't even want to date too young for sex i was like why am i even trying to pretend to be straight but i was mm -hmm. um i think and this is the heavy-handed topic it was to mask the fact that it's very hard to be friends with people when you're attracted to them and i mean yeah. like romantically physically like and this is especially when i got to like 16 17 it went from things like oh like x like this person's attractive or like this person looks good to buy 17, I was like, if this person asked to fuck, I would do it at the drop of a hat. <laughs> You're a freak, bro. And by, and, but, but here's the thing. Like, yeah. that's funny to say. It's These are people who are supposed to be my friends, right, my right, best right, right, friends. Right, right, right. And so, like, imagine trying to talk to someone, but all, and I'm being very serious about this. Imagine trying to talk to someone, but all you can think about is, like, disrobing them. Mm. That's hard. Can I, can I say something? Go ahead. I'm a little offended because that means that you don't think me and Kevin look good enough that you would want to just disrobe and that's how we're friends. Well, that's an off-the-camera yeah, he's, waiting, he's waiting for the Patreon. I was, yeah. No, I was like, I was sitting here. He's like, oh, yeah, I can't be friends with people I'm attracted to. And I'm just sitting here like, I think I'm a handsome guy. I said, I mean, okay, so. It's just to break the time. I'm just fucking with uh, you. Right, so here's the, so it's very hard. And I mean, like, it, it went from a point where it was just like this one person to now there was like a few of them. Okay. And it made me feel perverse. Like, I actually felt like a bad person because I'm, like, I'm trying to be friends with these people. I mean, seriously, haven't you noticed that for the most part, I spent a lot of time with girls, Anna and Sophia, mostly? Mm -hmm. When I wasn't in the band, most of my friends were girls because it was, like, in a version for my sanity because I was, like, I feel like a fucking pervert. And okay. that's really fucking damaging to someone, especially when, like, there's no wiggle room or avenues for the normalization of gayness. Like... In se like in sex ed, no one talks about like gay sex, like gay sex like yeah, safe yeah. sex for gay people. And that's for either sex. Nothing about lesbians, nothing about gay men. And then like you watch all these shows. We grew up with straight Disney. Yeah. It's always the princess gets kissed by the prince. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then it, it, it's like by the time you're 16, you still haven't seen any fucking sign that like that shit is okay. Right. Or that that shit is normal. And so what happens is that you start to like internalize all that taboo. And it's like you have all those bad feelings but all that curiosity and you don't know what to do with it do you feel like that kind of made it worse as to why the, you were distancing yourself from your i think that's what friends? caused it oh the fact that like i didn't know what it would be like to kiss anyone to kiss because i didn't want to kiss girls mm -hmm. but i couldn't kiss a boy so it was like i'm just gonna use this person who's my friend as the poster boy for how good that might feel okay do you, you get what i'm this saying was like a like a like a like a, a you thing because I mean I can't speak from like your experiences but I mm -hmm. feel like for the most part at least like you said in, in our like group that we mm -hmm. were in nobody Sorry, ever showed like an ounce of like being against like you coming out or no like, no one ever was but I will well I will say to because like I, remember, I wasn't friends with the same people you were friends with in high school but like I will say to a point it's like I feel like that type of stuff doesn't show itself until mm -hmm. there is somebody around you that does like you won't find out your friends homophobic until somebody comes out as gay and they're like oh i fucking exactly. hate gay people but that's you, why yeah. but you know also i mean i'm not gonna name drop who but like we have someone in the friend like this current friend group who's been identifying as like bisexual since we were like eighth grade mm -hmm. so like i don't know 
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, wait, it's or, or like as pansexual, you okay. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So it's like, uh-huh. I was never the first, but I think I probably had the hardest. Um, and I mean hardest as in like probably the same the, way you say that biology is harder than yeah everything <laughs> about my life. Sucks. So like I probably had the most um, wild journey because I started off, and I mean. You especially were there for like the full progress. Maybe you don't, obviously you don't have like a documented timeline of it. But like, I remember being 14, 15, being like, oh, I'm straight. Like, let a guy hit on me. He's gonna, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then it's like six, so it goes from like 15, I'm straight. Stay away from me, guys. And then 16, I, it's like, huh, that boy's kind of, hmm. I do remember like, well, mm-hmm. I don't mean to cut it off, but I do remember yeah. there was a point where like some people, they kind of like, from like your like the way like your attitude and stuff, they even thought that like you might have been homophobic. Do you feel like that was like you trying to push it away? I or? think. Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about because uh-huh. Poku said the same thing to me. I remember because we were talking about this actual topic a few years ago, and he said he was like, no one ever thought you were gay because you were like flamboyant. He was mm-hmm. like, everyone thought you were gay because of how seclusive you were. Mm-hmm. Like he was like, you hid away so much and you hid yourself from people like. And this is actually like a part of a broader problem, which is I always thought I was an extrovert, and it took mm-hmm. everyone telling me I was an introvert for me to be like, what? <laughs> but yeah, so he was like, you're so he was he people. was like you were so introverted. He was like there had to have been like some really damaging reason, and he was like it was, pro- and we like everyone just assumed it was because you were gay. They were right, <laughs> plot twist, but like, yeah, that's really what it was. And like back to the whole like the real internal struggle was like because there was no avenue to I guess express gayness or to like realize it in its truth everything was hypothetical and so my mind went wild in the worst right. way and it wasn't until sorry no you're good i'm just and moving. you know i'm not gonna go into any detail about this but it wasn't until i had like my first like sexual experience that like those feelings actually went away right because then it was like oh so this is what it's like and it this doesn't feel fire. yeah i was like <laughs> i'm sure it feels the same way for anyone where it's just like uh, this doesn't feel like some evil diabolic because even like straight sex is taboo for some families they're like mm-hmm. you can't fuck until you're married you know what right, I mean? Right. And it's like, for a lot of people, I'm sure that it feels the same way. But for me, it was just doubly down because of who I, who, what kind of people I liked, which was guys. So it was like, you know, I have all the struggle already to deal with, like, sexual, I guess, curiosity and frustration. Mm-hmm. Topple with the fact that I got to fucking do it with people I'm not allowed to. Right. Yes. What, mm-hmm. and, and it's, like, especially interesting because, like, we definitely grew up in a time <laughs> where, like, any sort of... Grew up in a time. Make it sound like we're so old. <laughs> yeah. But... We definitely grew up in a time where, like, any sign of flamboyance, people were like, thought you were a little gay. Yeah. Like, because even, even, like, so, like, no one ever thought, I, I don't, well, I don't know if people thought I was gay, but I definitely had an experience, like, not even that long ago, like, maybe, like, two years ago, where, where this girl called me, like, fruity. Yeah. I, th- I told you about you told this. Us about this. Where, like, yeah. this girl called me fruity, <laughs> and she was like, uh, see, there's some stories I wait to tell until we're bigger because we are still local and people might know who I'm talking about. Uh-huh. But I'm not going to say any <laughs> names, but, so this, I, I was, like, talking, talking back and forth with this girl whatever we meet up and this girl calls me fruity like like fruity and uh, and she was like i was like she was like first she was like oh don't get offended by this and i was like like what she was like oh you're just mad fruity and i was like huh she was like yeah you're mad energetic and i was like that's not what fruity means like <laughs> like i don't know right. if you just like are scared to call me gay or something but like that's not what fruity means but like i'm not gay. like i showed up to your house a woman's house to like you know like hang out uh-huh. and and there have also been other situations where people are like, no, fun. like I never like thought that of you. But it's yeah. also when you're so like in tune with your own like sexuality, where like those other type of things don't scare you, where mm-hmm. you're like, like oh, I can call this dude handsome. I know I don't like him. Right. But yeah. even then, we grew up in a time where any sign of like flamboyance, it's either like there, there's two ends of the spectrum. You're either flamboyantly gay, or like flamboyantly homophobic if that makes yeah. sense like some dudes will use gayness as like a joke against gay people and yeah. other dudes will use gayness because that is just their like sexuality and that is who they are yeah and i was squarely in the middle i i think and i think i said this um i think i said this when i was talking about this with another friend i was like did i ever i mean i guess it's more like a question did i ever come off as effeminate to you guys in high school i on like, in high school i honestly did not interact with you enough to remember in, like as effeminate like in high school like was i like uh-oh. effeminate not like not like, that. <laughs> like obviously i wasn't walking around with like makeup and like this like yeah. there was very effeminate gay men in high school right and i think that helps offset any sort of feminine side that i had word before you know i'm not a college graduate <laughs> <laughs> no i'm talking about high school though like i remember like we had some people like you know and i'm not name dropping anyone but we had someone who was gay and he did makeup and then another one who was like 
always on like Snapchat or Instagram posting like ass pics, you know oh. what I mean, and showing himself oh, like training oh, to become a stripper. Like, have I ever seen you do? Anything yeah, so I'm saying like like you know like not even relative to them, but just in general, have I ever come off as like an effeminate person, especially no, after coming I out? Don't, I don't think so. I mean, there's did I? Did stuff, I though? Well, <laughs> <laughs> there be some stuff where like it'd be like jokes. Like I remember like we used to do like T Rex and just be like ah, or, like just make like make fun of like <laughs> yeah. situations like that. But I never took that as like a. What did he just do? Yeah, like, <laughs> got him. Run that by me, <laughs> sus boy. Yeah, <laughs> but that's no. the thing that I'm saying. Like, it's so, like, yeah. normalized in, like, I don't want to say the culture we grow up in, but, like, like at least, like, the, the society in general, it's so normal to, like, make those kinds of jokes. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I Even mean, in terms of, like, 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 definitely, like, um, attention and just, like, the way, people, like, gays and lesbians are treated definitely gays. changed within. <laughs> the, gays. the way he said that sounded like a, like a, like a slur a little bit, though. Yeah, the LGBT community was treated. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, because the reason Yo, I said that him, is bro, because... No, the reason I'm saying is because there's, there's, like, different hurdles. Like, right now, like, definitely, like, being gay and being lesbian is a lot more accepted than, like, further down the spectrum, like, being um, non-binary or just, like... You know, right. Exactly. So, like, like going... Even 10 years ago, like when we were in high school, there was some stuff where we were like, don't We do were not in scared. high school 10 years ago, by the way. <laughs> we are not well, that I mean, old. We we're getting like, close. Yeah, we're getting real close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, five. Five, ten, year, five, at, ten years ago. Listen, right? we can feasibly say eight years ago when we were in high school. Yeah. We can exactly. actually say that. I could say that. That's crazy. Well, don't eight think so. years ago, in we were In two freshmen. years, it'll be 10 years, so I don't think it's that crazy. Yeah. Don't yeah. remind me that I'm We're getting old. We're closer to 30 than we are to 10, bro. Like, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> that is fair. We're closer to what? Like, we're closer to 2040 than we were to 2020s, yeah. to 2000. So. It's crazy. Yeah. So, regardless, like, even at that time, there was a bunch of people. I mean, I know I wasn't like this, but there was people that were like, don't touch me like that. That's gay. Like, don't touch me, bro. Like, no homo yeah. or whatever. And that was just, that was like what people were doing for a lot of high school. It wasn't towards the end of of high school where I personally felt like people could be more like open about it mm-hmm. with people because like even in the hallways you would see a lot of like straight couples kissing or like like you know hanging out but like you never really like oh that's a gay couple like look at them like being all open like that was kind of like not yeah. seen in high school there wasn't a, there there I don't think there actually was besides the the two girls yeah I know there was not a mm-hmm. single yeah. gay couple oh, in our grade yeah. and I don't know if I, I don't even think it was like open I just don't think any gay people were dating Mm-hmm. I mean, there already weren't that many that we knew about. Yeah. I think I was probably one of the four, realistically speaking, you know? I feel like people got to explore that side of them more in, like, college. Oh, a lot yeah. of people, I feel like, transitioned from, like, oh, I'm, I'm definitely straight to, mm-hmm. like, I might be bi or just, like, gay. Yeah. I think you guys got to see the... You guys got to see the easier side of it, and I think it helps that pretty much every fucking girl in the band identified as bisexual. Mm-hmm. So I was like, so when I when I was like, I think I might not be straight anymore. You guys were like, welcome to the party, because like, <laughs> all, like half, the fu- yeah, half the fucking band was already like identifying as queer. <laughs> but yeah, I think I but I think what offset it was like, I think most people, especially because like most of the people have like older parents, right. um, I guess their parents just didn't probably care as much. Mm-hmm. Or they would be queer identifying, but still be in straight relationships. Right. So I think that really where I guess my journey broke the mold was I was the first person coming out and actually dealing with the repercussions of expressing gayness. Because most people, besides like the overtly gay guys or the the dating girls, they could say they were bi, but they were still dating the opposite sex. Right. Or they had never even like kissed the opposite. Like people would say like, I'm bi. And then it was like, you have not had a single like queer experience and that's for me where i flipped the switch too because i remember in high school i identified as bisexual Mm -hmm. because i had illusions that at some point i would like women and then things would change and then it wasn't until like six years later still haven't done anything with a woman i'm just like no i'm just gay (laughs) like i just i just don't use it anymore because i was like i'm not and and some people will go their life genuinely being able to like be turned on by women wanting to like be women but they never Mm -hmm. will and they'll be bi i'm just not one of those people like now i'm at a point where i'm like platinum star gay like i know i'm never gonna want a woman so like i just don't use bi anymore i'm i'm, I'm very happy that like at least whatever struggles you were going through mm-hmm. wasn't because of like the group we were in because yeah i know like everybody in our group was like very supportive of like anything like anything so like you want to do it Rally, yeah you feel me like it was just a, yeah. like it wasn't ever an issue like yo like i like women i like i like guys or whatever just be like cool we keep we keep it moving i yeah. definitely think our generation is just way more accepting than like oh, previous absolutely. like there's still a lot of like work that needs to be done mm. um 
but at least in like the place where we live and like I, i'll say like the northeast or like the east and west coast and like the northeast it's like more way more accepting and it's not like weird like no one ever made you i don't know if i, I can't speak for you sorry but like yeah. i feel like no one <laughs> no, tried <laughs> to make you feel like an outsider because of what you identified as or things yeah. like that definitely no one in this group and just like a question just like out of pure ignorance of my own it's like is that something right because i know as a straight dude i'll never go up to somebody and like let them know i'm straight yeah is that something because there are a lot of people that aren't out or are like still hiding in mm -hmm. terms of like their sexuality and things like is that something you let be known when approaching someone of the same sex or even someone of the opposite sex like um, you're like oh hey don't worry like i'm, I'm gay or like or like hey like i'm actually interested in you like not like friendly way like mm. like well, okay so that's actually this is gonna be more of a funny well first of all i never actually know there was one there was one girl who i think might have been hitting on me in college but this was like freshman year and i transferred out of that college so like that was kind of like a you know nothing really happened mm -hmm. that was a non-event more or less um i usually don't nowadays i mean it's not really coming out anymore as much as it is just like disclosure like you know what i mean because it's not like to come out means that like you're letting it be known to the world mm -hmm. i've already done that like even oh. my extended family knows because and i never actually said it I just remember we, we would have, like, weekly barbecues in the summer, and I just started bringing Vinny around. Mm -hmm. And then everyone got the message. Right. Like, there was no words that needed to be spoken. Everyone understood it. It's actually, this is actually a funny story. Um, the only cousin who ever... So I have um, seven little cousins. Damn. I know. <laughs> I have seven... Well, that, that's just... Just that's the, the little that's ones. That's the smaller half. The older people, way more of them. So I have seven little cousins. Uh, the, Wait, hold on. Can I just say something? I literally have five cousins total. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I have seven little cousins on my mom's side. Okay. I have more cousins on my dad's. Crazy. But um, actually, no, it's more like nine, but two of them are second, whatever. So one of my cousins, I believe he is the fifth oldest? Fifth oldest. I remember um, me and my boyfriend stayed over at my cousin's house. And, you know, he's the son of the cousin. And I remember I went to his room because he was like, you know, he didn't want to hang out, whatever. He's like 12. And I remember he was, he said, um, you and Vinny are a good team. He said that to Vinny. He was like, you and Julian are a good team. But he was actually, he had a girlfriend at the time and she broke up with him because she was a lesbian. Oh, wow. And mind you, these are like 12 year old kids, but it's still so funny <laughs> to me. And I remember telling him, I was like, you know, you know, like, don't worry about dating. Like, you know, me and Vinny, we didn't date until, and he goes, wait, you and Denny are dating? Wait, you and Denny are baby. You and Denny are baby. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me crazy. out. No. Shout out Denny. Yeah, shout out Denny, my boyfriend. <laughs> Your boyfriend. No. So he was like, "You and Vinny are dating." I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "So you're gay?" I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Got him. Good for you." Yeah, like he just right. kicks me out of the house. <laughs> no, he's like, "Mom, we can't sleep here tonight." Yeah, that was the only cousin. That's actually really the only family member at all to like address it at all. Everyone else was just kind of like, "Well, Julian's gay now." <laughs> Um, where was I going with this beforehand? Uh, right. So, like, I remember you asked me like something about like talking to other. Oh people. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. bringing so it up to people. I will you say, don't know. I think, I mean, I don't know who watches this. I don't know if there's consistent viewers or whatever, but like consistent viewers, yes. I mean, I'm one of them. Yes. You guys got my vote. Uh, so yeah, here this battle. Like, this guy's. I will say, I <laughs> I use I use that information as a means to express trust. Okay. Like when, for example, when I was at work, I mean, at my old job, uh, there was like. I would work with the same, like, six people every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, I only told one of them because he was the one I was closest to. The rest don't need to know that. Right. Not that it matters. I'm sure they wouldn't care or they would uh, appreciate the honesty. But they don't need to know. They're not my friends. But this guy was the closest thing I had to a friend there. So, like, you know, when we would talk about dating occasionally, I just felt like it would be very hard to continue the conversation using they. Because mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to say right. she and lie, but I also didn't want to say he and then be like, Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Have that. So I would be like, you know, full disclosure, I'm gay. I have a boyfriend. Okay. Anytime, like, just, like, as the off rip. So, like, when we talk about dating, you're you're aware yeah. of what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, oh. now it's less of, like, um, it's not really, like, a rite of passage where, like, I need to get it off my chest. Now it's, like, if I tell you, I mean, I'm telling all of YouTube more or less now, but like, <laughs> no, not a lot of us. So don't yeah, worry about not it. yet. But like, like, yo, go back. Episode eight. That was yeah. a banger. <laughs> yeah. But like for someone who doesn't know me, for someone who doesn't watch this, that's an expression of trust, okay. right. which that's is cool. why I remember when I told you guys about it, me and Vinny had only been, me and Vinny were dating for eight months before I told you guys. 
honestly, like, I don't think you ever, like, explicitly told me. It just, like, mm-hmm. was a casual thing that, like, yeah, it was, was known. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, cool. it was never, oh. like, you ever had to, like, tell me. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just, like, oh, my boyfriend. I was, like, cool. Yeah. And it's been like that. Like, I like how casual that is. Like, I, I that's personally. That's how it's supposed to be. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, a, a man and man relationship should be as normal as a man I and woman's like relationship. It's so dumb because I know I met at least one person like this in college. There might have been more, but like, you know, it's kind of like as soon as I hear stuff like that, I'm like, right, like, yeah, you just step away from step that. away from that. Like, they'll be like, oh, if you're gay, you have to like, like, if I'm gonna be your friend, you have to tell me like you're gay because I need to know if you're attracted to me. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of dumb because like you don't go up to like women and you're just yeah. like trying to talk to them. Like by that's, the way, that's and, and you I know, wouldn't mind. And the thing <laughs> yeah. is, those type of men are that way though. Like they are just predatory as shit. And they think other men are just like them. And they're like, oh, I can't be friends yeah. with, with someone I'm, like, attracted to. Like, I can't be friends with a woman right. because I'm going to want to fuck them. Like, I remember those are bad people. Hear me out. <laughs> you can be friends with women without wanting to be with them. Like, that, that is something that can't happen. You can literally just be friends with a woman. I, I want you, I want all the men out there to, to hear this and take this in. You can be friends with the opposite sex without wanting them. Yeah, I remember seeing, like, a banger of a tweet where someone was like, straight men are afraid of gay men because they're afraid they'll treat them the way they treat women. Literally. I was like, so ah. <laughs> Like, that was such a fun... Because I was like... You hit it home. Yeah, I mean, the, the, good thing, the good thing is, like I said, even when you, like, even when, like, my friends were watching that process of, like, me kind of realizing that I wasn't straight, it was never, like, a, like a back off. And this is actually the question that um, they got asked me. He was like, when you came out, did you feel like anyone changed their attitude towards you or, like, their behavior? And I was like, no. Because you guys literally watched it, the process. It, it literally didn't matter. So it was such mm-hmm. a slow go. It was a six-year process. I was like, y'all saw it happen from start to finish. I was like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, there was never any surprise. So there was never a need to change because you guys were going through that journey with me. No, yeah, from, especially from the dynamic, at least in the like the band where we were just, you know, mm-hmm. struggling, the, like going through different causes yeah. or whatever. The last thing on anybody's mind was like, Oh my god, you're you're gay. Yeah, that's what the crazy. Fuck? Like everyone was just like, yeah. cool, but we gotta go. Get yeah, this we shit gotta done. go do this fucking. <laughs> but we also, gotta do this quick change because we just finished the jazz portion. We onto the marching portion. Right. But other people do really should never affect you in any way. Like, yeah, I, I genuinely am a firm believer of like let people do whatever the fuck they want to do. It, it shouldn't like. Why would that ever shock anybody? Like, Dude, I'm we are so progressive like, on this podcast. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, look at us being so <laughs> progressive. So Aren't we good people? No. But I think at the end of the day, and I mean, I'm I'm not gonna be the one. I'm not gonna be a fucking like uh, spokesperson. Like, yeah, for the that's queer what I'm community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're but not we're you're not on this feel, podcast yeah, to yeah, be yeah, a yeah, spokesperson. to just be like the fucking yeah. That's, I also hate that like like at least now when you're somebody's part of the LGBT LGBTQ community, like just anytime they say something, uh-huh. they're supposed to be like the spokesperson. Yeah, they're supposed yeah. to like be like yeah. you know you're supposed to represent. Poorly, like, you're yeah, not yeah. representing. That's why I feel I feel bad for Lil Nas X because he's like one of the few celebrated like black and queer men yeah. so like he like he has a lot of weight on his shoulders and that's fucking wild but i will say like if people and i guess this is like addressing the audience if you have a friend look that, into the camera i am if you have a friend <laughs> that comes out as gay to you or any sort of queer you need to have like you need to have your shit figured out before they tell you because that shit will be a sleeper hit sometimes like there are some people who you're not going to know it is. And if you're homophobic or if you are very accepting, they deserve to know. Even if they don't come out to you, you need to let them know where you stand with that. And you need to know for yourself. Like if you're going to be homophobic, at least stay away from me. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Cause then when I come out to you, I don't want you to pussyfoot around it and act like you're my friend when you hate me now. Yeah. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I want to know now. After All right, this, Julian. Actually, this. this is why we actually brought you onto the podcast. Like, I can't fuck with this. Shit. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You need to leave. On. People who watch this, we're gonna dab them on the street. By the way, I hate black people, Asian people, Hispanic. Yeah, people. I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm a closet racist, but we're not. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, yeah. you're not. I hate Uruguayans, but okay, like, you know, fair. I still. That's fair, honestly. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm okay with that Yo, statement. My, my, yeah. What I just said is going to get taken crazy out of context <laughs> in a couple months. I've said a lot of horrible things on this cat. I, I, I can't come back. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Listen, but, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think we've said this, like, on a previous podcast um, where it's, like, whenever a, a group, like, a minority is being addressed and you are the minority that's being addressed in mm-hmm. any sort of standpoint, you always end up speaking for the community even though you're not – speaking for the community yeah like if i'm in a room full of other white people but i'm the only white hispanic person and they're talking about like hispanic issues they're gonna be like oh juan like your yeah. name is fucking juan like give your input what do the hispanic people feel i'll be like i don't know how all hispanic people feel i know how yeah. i feel i know my how my hispanic family feels i can't speak for 
Hispanic Ecuadorians. I can't speak for Hispanic people from Central America. And, and it's the same for like gayness or or or, or just like yeah, for the like ethnicity <laughs> or for the, the LGBTQ. I feel like it should. It's the same. Like I can, you can speak on your own experience, but you can't speak on yeah. everyone else's. And that's why, like, that's why I'm saying, like, I told my story. Yeah. This is not true for other people, and this isn't even the point to fucking like. The point of this wasn't even to fucking pedestal like what it's like to come out. It's just to tell a story. No, nah, I was to tell to a, very... a little bit though. Come on, be honest. Uh, no, <laughs> because I don't think I got in my soapbox on anything. I do think, however, that maybe I have a very similar experience to a lot of people because I know a lot of people. Like one of the biggest arguments against um, being gay is a choice is that a lot of people know very early. Right. Like a lot of people will like have stories where like they could be fully six years old and they'll have like you know someone just be like you have a girlfriend in kindergarten and then they'll be like no i like boys like they're like and, I, and these are like these are word of mouth stories right. whereas like some people know when they're children and that's not to say like gay people and that's why like, i'm not even gonna get to the whole gay people brainwashing shit but like you know where you stand pretty early because attraction starts a lot younger than we think i mean like like other animals they can be fucking ready to go in like four months and I think we vastly underestimate how self-aware children are. And I mean that in, like, the... Uh, not sexual, but, like, in the sense of, like, they knew who they know who they're compatible like with. Person. Yeah, they know yeah. who they're compatible with, and they know who they're, um, they gravitate to. Yeah, I know. Like, Even from then, like, though. From, like, yeah. first grade, I was like, wow. I like, I like yeah. that girl. And that's the yeah. thing. I remember being younger and, like, just not understanding the... I don't... I didn't understand the hype of women. Like watching, <laughs> that, I don't know what the heck no, is like, about. What I'm saying is, no, like, I'm fucking out. with that one, bro. Women no, are like, men. What, like, what I'm saying is, like, I would watch a Disney. I would shut well, up. I still don't get the. <laughs> I still don't get the hype. Like, fuck these hoes. No, I would watch a Disney movie, and it would be like, oh, like the prince and the princess live happily. I'm like, You're like the prince is bad. Like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I just be like, the, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, y'all trying to be the fucking prince. I'm trying to be Snow White. Like, but honestly, like. Oh, uh, even talking about like attraction when people are like, "Oh, you can't even like make that choice at a young age." Like, like I per like personally, right? Like I know, like I I'm a straight man, but like I probably didn't know I like women until I was like ten or eleven. Like before that, it's not even that I had been thinking like I like men, but it's just like I hadn't thought about being with anyone yeah. in terms of like anything outside of just friendship. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. you're ten, yeah, I didn't know I liked women when I was ten, but just because I didn't know I liked anybody yet, like I didn't have those like hormones i didn't have those emotions that i'm like oh yeah i really like this girl i was just living life yeah. crazy concept it's not even that like i'm choosing it's just like i was just living like i was just sitting and breathing i didn't know i liked women i don't know like men i just was living Being life it's definitely like terrible at that i mean now you have a lot of like like t little tiny representation that they're throwing in there because any little bit is like People start tripping. Like I don't know, like the tripping, new, bro. the new like uh, the Buzz Lightyear movie where like like oh, two yeah, women. Yeah. It was like they were like, yeah. oh my god, I can't believe that they had two women yeah. doing that. And on it's like a two TV. second kiss. It was literally just a smooch. Not like, even like, a smooch, like a, like a, like a tap kiss, kiss, like a, kiss, like yeah. a hello, Mwah. stuff like that. Yeah. But like I, I mean, I've talked about this before, but like something like um, I know not necessarily for like accepting it, but more like okay, uh, like this is this is cool to watch like on TV. Was like uh, I don't know if you watched How to Get Away with Murder. They do oh like God, this guy loves yo that show. that that show is Hear fire. Hear me out, cancel that show. Bro. <laughs> that yeah, show is fucking fire. show before he no, starts talking about it. It was like the What's, third fucking yo, time. <laughs> yo, but like it's hey, it'd be relevant. Like it sucks. that was the first show where I actually got to see like a like a like a gay like relationship unfold on screen, mm -hmm. and like. I was like, yo, people are tripping. Like, it's like, and I, I don't necessarily want to see this, but this is this is mad cute. Like, this I is think, fine. I think people kind of conflate wokeism with normalization. Yeah, I, I think agree. I think I it's agree. very ignorant because, and I mean, I've already said this, but like, part of the problem was that growing up as a queer person, you don't see that anywhere. It's always straight couples. Like it's all the Disney, all the Disney, the villains. It's all like the Disney. <laughs> all the Disney villains yeah. are straight. You yeah. heard it here first. Or, or, the villain. or, and actually, this is something I hadn't considered. If there was someone who was like coded as gay, uh -huh. like someone who was queer presenting, they were the villain. Yep. Like think of like Scar from Lion King. Very like. Scar. No, Scar. He, no, he wasn't gay, but he's coded as gay. Like he's very like flamboyant, very like posh. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. So when Yo, you have me, people, you should have seen me and Kevin's face. Yeah, like, you, like when you, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like when you're when you're in the early 2000s and you see a man.
talking like this, and all of his movements are very like you're gonna assume he's que he's queer coded. That's queer coded. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. He's a villain though, and that's what a lot of that was early on. It was like if you did have gay representation, they were the bad guys. Like Aladdin. Yeah, Jafar. Jafar. Like it's always like the men with the makeup or the men who are like very like um well dressed not well dressed you can be straight and well dressed but like the way that they dressed was sort of like no, it can. gave like drag queen <laughs> vibes almost uh -huh. and it's like they were always the bad guy. I, so I had I honestly, honestly never thought of that. Yeah, like, I'm telling you, look up. I'm it. telling you, like I'm I I know there's more examples that I can't think of on the moment. But when I read that, because it was like not really a dissertation, it was sort of like um a thread about Even it. Even like the like like the Jungle Book snake. I don't know if you've seen oh, that. Yes, the, the, the little, the snake in the jungle oh, yeah. book. Or like, um, God, I don't know what fucking movie I was about to reference. I think it was Princess and the Frog. Like, I, didn't, well, um, I never watched that movie. That movie's so fire. Yeah, that I guy. I like, that one. Yeah, but like, I'm like, if you look back at like a lot of early movies and I'm not saying Disney's homophobic, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying like, uh, I'm no, no, say it, say it, say it. Yeah, Disney, <laughs> fuck you. No, but, um, oh, you're well, good. well. Disney strike My back. license all out for them to see now. It's on the floor. I can't yeah, see. I know. But, um, yeah, so, like, if you look at that, it's also, it's the combination of, it's, I'm putting shit away. I it's know. the combination <laughs> of. You were talking to the ceiling. <laughs> it's the combination of not expressing it in a healthy way, but then also demonizing it at the same time. And so I remember, and this is actually crazy, the first time I ever saw any positive representation of queerness was when I was 13 with Steven Universe. Mm. Well, who was queer in Steven Square? Everyone. I, 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 wasn't I don't know. I, I so, never that okay, so, I mean, I'm sure for anyone who doesn't know what Steven Universe is, and I'm not going to fucking... It's a show, so I'm not going to summarize it, but like basically, the, there's beings called gems. Oh, no, no. I, I've watched, like, like I've watched it, but right. not enough to know that so everyone was, like, queer. So, all the gems are female. All the gems are female. And there's one of them, Garnet. I'm sure you know her. Which one is Garnet? The tall one who's, oh, okay, like... Yeah. She's actually a fusion of two gems. Okay. Oh, that we're in love. And, the, and, you know, all gems are female. They're in love. They, like, kiss each other. They hug. They get married. Now, Steven Universe, and this is actually true, Steven Universe had the first queer wedding in cartoon history. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I, I no do idea. know that, and like, that was And that wasn't... Like a staple and that, for, like, and that wasn't even until later in the seasons. Because hmm. it took crazy. them fucking... It took them, like, 20 fucking episodes to even reveal that, like, Garnet was a fusion. And fusion is, like, an allegory of, like, love, but also sex. Right. And that actually matters because there's one example in the show. There's two gems named Lapis and Jasper. And, like, it's sort of like an allegory for, like, rape and sexual assault because Jasper keeps forcing Lapis to fuse with her, but Lapis doesn't want to. Oh, wow. So the show is not only tackling queer issues. It's tackling queer issues in a way that children can digest. Hmm. They're, using, they're using fusion as a metaphor for sex, for dating, for love. And then they, they show you the good sides, like Garnet, where it's like a stable, healthy, happy fusion, but also the, ev the, the dark sides of it, where you can abuse your partner and manipulate them and make them feel like... Like, Lapis has full Stockholm Syndrome on this kid's show, where she's like, I hated her, but I loved her, and I need her back. I miss her. I hate her. It's so crazy when you watch shows back, and you realize how many things are, like, exactly. woven into it so that kids can digest and it. I but, feel like yeah. that's, like... Like another reason why like we might be more accepting stuff yeah. like that. It was like, like coded into our. But yeah. that's a that's a that's a slippery slope though because yeah. you're like kids aren't being brainwashed, but now we're saying that oh, like. No. You but know? that's not brainwashing. It's not though. brainwashed. I know it's and not that's brainwashing. That's the point. Is it's that, just like that's just yeah. the argument that someone like just to play yeah. devil's advocate. Uh, I'm the I'm the white man in the class right now. Yeah. Playing devil's advocate, someone someone can say like, oh, you see how it's being subliminally coded into these kids' yeah. TV shows, so they are more accepting, so they are more aware of it even without it being blatant like oh hey this is yeah. a gay relationship this is the lgbtq community without explicitly saying it let's just say for the sake of playing devil's advocate right that someone uses that as the argument what do you say like how is that not the same thing as like putting like straight sex in like every movie ever. no you're right. Like, yeah. you're right that's and like, like most yeah. of that like sex scenes are like not required at all euphoria i'm talking about you i'm like yo, <laughs> yo hbo max be throwing in a a sex scene for no yeah. reason right. and bro. i think i think that we need more of that i mean honestly steven universe was a mid show overall never but watched like, it like fully. but like yeah, and i'm know. just using it as an example because isn't it crazy to think because we talk about like people talk about how like oh this generation is so accepting motherfucker like 10 years ago that wasn't the case yeah right. i still remember gay being used as an insult like it's like still, and, it, it still, still is. is like it someone will is. someone will like die in a video game and be like oh that's so gay yeah like what's wrong with that you know what i mean so it's like 
Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, no, I'm not using them like yeah, that. Yeah, we're like, simultaneously. There are so many different ways. And, and that's the scary thing. We're simultaneously the most accepting generation, but we are still not that accepting. Like, it's yeah, still very true. difficult to convey a message like normalizing queer couples, normalizing queer sex, queer sex education. It's hard to do that and still not have people advocate against it, even though we spent our entire lives being convinced that being straight was the only option. And it's also like, it, it just goes to a further point where it's like, people will say, oh, you guys are so hung up on a word, right? Like mm-hmm. gay as the word, or like, let's say things as like the N word, right? None of us are black, none of us are using that word, but it is used in like our community around other people, right? And it's just, people are like, oh, you're so caught up on the word, you're so caught up on mm-hmm. these things. But when you look at the context of the word, when you look at the people who have been negatively affected by these things, you come to realize that it's not just, when you say these things, it's not just the context in which you are saying them. Every word holds that weight of years and years of tribulation and and mm-hmm. misogyny and racism yeah. and homophobia. And these things are all woven into this one word. And while yes, people are like, oh, it's just the word, get over it. It's the woke mob, it's the woke left, this, that, and the third. It still is just a matter of what these things stood for. There was a time when a gay man could not say he was a gay man because he would be shot and killed in the street. There was a time when- Or arrested. Or arrested. There, there was a time even when like being an immigrant, being being a Hispanic person in America was, you know, you were just looked at as like the help, the work. It, it, it It's just yeah. so many things that are woven into our language that we can't just sit here and say, it's just a word. You shouldn't get mad. It's just a word. We can't anymore because of where we've stood as a society for years and not addressing these issues. Yeah. Like, Slavery was a thing a hundred like how many like two hundred years two two hundred years ago I less like four hundred like segregation was a thing over less than a hundred years ago you you couldn't get married as a gay man up until what twenty years or less like until Obama yeah, we yeah until we ten years ago like the Obama we while that happened. yeah so I know like I'm ranting yeah. a little bit and I'm like talking about issues that don't directly affect me whatever you want it to be and people can say what they want. But at the end of the day, it language is powerful. Like, mm. I, I'm not one to say, like, speaking things into existence. Like, while I do, there's a part of me that thinks you should speak good things. But there is so much power in language itself. It's just so scary to think about because you can just say, you know, you die in a video game. You're like, damn, that was so gay. But you don't understand the context of all these things and, like, why mm. we look at negative actions as gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's actually a funny story. I remember me and Miguel were on Discord one time, and I was playing maybe like Overwatch or something. <laughs> and I remember I died, and I was like, "Oh, what a faggot!" And then oh he goes, God, "Oh, I forgot God. you could say that." Yeah, I'm forgetting too. <laughs> that shit was so me funny. Yeah, uh-huh. the first time you, you, you dropped that earlier, you, uh, and we, if we roll yeah. back the clip, <laughs> me and Juan was just like, "I was so I know stressed my out." <laughs> yeah. oh. I saw him like he was like, "Do you wanna?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I listen. I know, I know my privilege. <laughs> Listen, uh, I know my rights. That stuff just stresses me out a little bit. I just yeah. like, not Sorry. that I'm uncomfortable. I don't care if you say it, right? Yeah. But like when other people who are not part of these communities say these things, it mm. makes me like incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, so don't because, say it. yeah, no, and I do have friends <laughs> that are a part of these communities. So uh, like part of being, you know, like an ally or just being someone who, who you don't even have to be an ally to just be a relatively okay person. Well, and be like, that's, well that's what it means to be an ally. Listen, right. you don't need to be an advocate you don't need to be overtly like Accepting pro me. acceptance or whatever being an ally literally just means live and let live if someone can tell you that they're gay or if you can find out someone's gay and just let that person fucking live you're being an ally that's really all it takes that's all it takes you don't need to fucking wear your pride badge pins and go to the fucking I, pride yeah. parade and you know i know you've spoken about this before like, yeah which is random like stu- like I still think they're fucking stupid. Like, we'll be like, repost this if you if you don't hate gay people. I can see who. Oh, like this have you seen every time when people post that? I would yeah, go on a tirade on Instagram. Then, I like, hate that yeah, shit. It's so dumb. Hear me out. If you need to show your virtues on Instagram and get likes for them to fucking mean anything, you're not a good person. You should be able to believe in that shit without letting people know it. Otherwise, I'm not gonna believe you. But then, how will people know I'm, I'm an advocate for these things? I, I want people to know. I need that validation. I need that extra little like on my Instagram feed. No, you absolutely fucking don't. <laughs> and I'll tell you what: the same people who are like, uh, fucking uh, repost this if you're not racist. I'm checking who's looking at this. No, you're not. 
<laughs> like I have, listen, I'm not even active on social media and I still have like 300 followers. You best believe your fucking ass. I am not looking at every single motherfucker <laughs> on my followers list. Plus when like a hundred of them were like bots or like the same person with multiple accounts. I'm like, you're tweaking if you think I'm a believe that you're fucking looking at That's me. how, no, no, no. See, 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 this is the shit. issue. This is why I know you guys are both in relationships for so long. Hear me out. Y'all ever post like <laughs> a post specifically for one person and then you're like stalking your story to make sure they watch it? I actually um, have done that though. See? Before my relationship. I have and done it, and you're saying it's crazy that no, no I've been hey, fucking searching. This, this happened at 14, <laughs> not 22. <laughs> yeah, 22, listen. 22, I should just bro, go. <laughs> you, no, 22, you just need to start fucking like yeah, telling man. people. No, this is actually, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell that story. That's an off camera story. Oh. But like the. The very few times that I've shot my shot have usually been successful. Hey. But I'm not talking about, like, with Vinny. I'm talking about, like, more, like, casual things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got 100% win rate. Yeah. Not me. Not 100%. <laughs> no, not I. Up there. But, like, and, I, and I'm not talking about, like, dating apps like Tinder or nothing either. I'm talking about, like, I would go to someone's DMs on Instagram, tell them, you know, what I'm looking for. You got what I want. And I got what you need. You know what I mean? <laughs> And usually that would work out. And that's when I was like 15. or No, not 15. Like 16, 17, 18. So you got to get your shit together. Yo, Julian, you are the worst person in the world. <laughs> Why would you tell me this? I have been single for seven years now. Seven? Since I was what? No, no, I'm lying. Probably like six years. But high school relationships, they don't really count they that don't. much. They, they don't, don't count that much. The amount of people who were dating in high school and now they're all lonely. Okay. It doesn't count. <laughs> okay. God damn. I said what I said. Come on. Hear me out. You know who you're talking about. Hear me out. <laughs> no. The last guess. Lies. No. <laughs> hear me no. out. This guy's fucking banned. I'm, here to, I'm here to say what's on my mind. Listen, how right. I feel how I feel has no bearing or any indication of how they feel. I am my own person. But I'm just going to say, I think he is the only person who I've seen in a high school relationship and actually come out and still be fucking dating that person. I'm built different, bro. That's, that's you're built very different because <laughs> it's not only like, y'all didn't even, it was like since sophomore year. It definitely like, it definitely like was challenging, especially. With we should get her on. We should get her on one day. We should. Just have you guys would just be looking at each other like googly eyes. That'll be our double time. date. Oh my god! Wow. <laughs> me, no real podcast. talk. This is actually true. Me and uh, Kevin's girlfriend have been like talking about a double date for maybe four years now, yeah. and we've never done it. It's never. And we had and we've had so many opportunities. Like I know we have. Double dates are just so hard. Like even introducing your partner to your friends it's is hard to. That. If they're like that. if your friends like if your partner's not already part of your friend group, it's a little hard. Like you're never just gonna randomly like let's say you're hanging out with all the boys. You're not mm. gonna invite your girl randomly. You know what I mean? Unless I mean, it's like a specific thing where everyone's girlfriends are going, yeah, then you can meet that way. But if it's just like, like, oh, me and Kevin are gonna h- go hang out, and he's like, oh, I'm bringing Sophia, I'll be like, oh. Okay. But I feel like that's literally <laughs> that's, what happened. That's though. happened, yeah. It's that's literally what happened. Like, oh, oh, at this point, oh sorry, that was God. a bad one. Help, Help me! They're trying to silence yeah. him. <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, like at this point, how many people? And I mean, th- I'm not trying to be funny, but like, isn't it? There's like five people in this friend group within a relationship, and like, I'm pretty sure every single one of them. Has been just kind of like, I'm dating this person. Actually, no, six. Because someone recently, I'm like. But like, one thing yeah. is just saying it, but then like introduce. Because like my yeah. like one of my very close friends now is in a relationship. But I'm never met his girl. Uh-huh. What, what another friend of mine that that I've been friends with forever dated a girl for like a year and I never met her once. Yeah, yeah. that's why. This Actually, is why. Crazy. This is why I waited eight months before I even told you guys about Vinny. Y'all yeah, like, yeah, I didn't know. Like, I think I was, was that the first to find out. But did you ever meet him? No, they they met him after I told yeah, you guys. Yeah. But like, like that's, that but that's why I waited because like I'm not gonna be that guy. And I've seen this so many times. There are still some people who I follow where their Instagram is riddled with past exes and they haven't deleted the posts. Okay. And my thing is, I'm not hear adding me anyone. out. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. If you and your man broke up, delete the Instagram yeah, pictures. Yeah, delete the post. Delete the whole profile. Actually, <laughs> stop making me have to guess that shit, man. Because yeah, I'm like, like God. I remember that that tweet where someone was like. Every month, like, this bitch got a new world. Bitch, you building a solar system? <laughs> like, is, is, this man's my world every month. You building a solar system? Like, I know some people who have, like, three different, like, ex, like three different uh, boyfriends, and they're currently single on their profile. And I'm like, I was not going to be that person. I right. We are two years in, and neither of us have even posted each other yet. That's how down, and that's not even, like, a thing of, like, the strength of the relationship. Yeah. It's just, like, we're not that tight. Because anything can happen. And I'm not going to be caught with my pants down posting about how I love this person so much, especially when, like, 
a lot of my followers I still haven't overtly come out to. Right. So I'm not going to have my first post be like this huge deal. Uh-huh. And then two months later, oh, we're not together. And I delete <laughs> the everything. Post gets deleted. You know like, what's bad? In high school, I used to do <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> I was literally that guy, yo. In high school, like, I would post the lead post. No. no (laughs) I think, no. I actually very rarely post posts. I will say, I do sometimes delete posts where, like, I guess maybe I was trying to be funny. Uh, Or, like, I was... I do that with tweets. I do that with tweets sometimes. I mean, I I, I think there are some posts where I was just trying to, like, maybe I had a funny thought in my head or something I thought would be, like, a banger. banger. And then, like, I post it. (laughs) And then, like, years later, I mean, in the moment, I still think it is. Like, maybe when I was, like, 16, 17, 18. And then years later, I'm, like... This this is a shit ain't hit. Yeah, like, I remember probably the worst thing I ever did, and this is a prime example of like the the coming out journey, right? When I was fifteen, I remember I posted a video of a man who narrowly dodges getting hit by a car, and the caption for that video was, "I'm the guy, and the car is that gay shit." <laughs> oh, no. And that was me at fifteen, currently like infatuated with guys, being like, "Miss me with that gay shit." I'm like, "What the?" And then like I remember being like nineteen, I was like, "This is fraudulent information." And I was like. <laughs> I don't know like, why I lied. I'm promoting. Yeah. Like, like you know how Instagram, when people would put like false information about COVID, it'd be like this post contains false uh, information. I was like, my, that, I was like, this needs that. I just deleted it. Yeah. I don't know. I I haven't really made any like posts recently that I've had to delete. I don't really no. post that much to be honest. Like on my personal yeah. stuff, I'll post like 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 I have a. Good <laughs> I'm not even gonna say this because people want to listen to the podcast. <laughs> but let's just say I don't make posts for everybody. Let's leave it at that. No, okay. I know, I know. Like, I rarely post. I'll post maybe once a year, and every time, every single time, without fail, I get messages like, "Y'all are still together? That's so crazy. How long yeah. has it been?" I'll be like, "Dog, literally scroll up and add one." I do that, <laughs> but like maliciously. I'd be hit, hitting a woman like, "Oh, y'all still dating?" She's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Hit me up when y'all break fuck. up." <laughs> He's like, "Fuck." He has a listen. He's like, "Damn it, not her." He got the next number. Let me know when he flops. It's, it's like just my death callers. note. Yeah. It's like the scam callers. They're just going down the number list. I will say. You're only 22, but you already take pictures like an Ecuadorian father. You you Do are I? you are your father. Yeah. Oh, you take the this most. Is, this is you taking. Ecuadorian this is you what taking a that selfie. Mean? This is you taking a selfie. Son, oh my <laughs> god, guys, hear me, hear me out. If you're if you're if you're old, if you're younger than 50, you should not take selfies like this. Dog, you have the same pose in every picture. We're the same. I don't know how to take pictures. I literally don't take pictures. Yeah, every I picture I have. No, no, no. Actually, this year's goal was actually to try to take more fucking pictures of myself because I would have no documentation. I'd, yeah. I'd go from 8 to 30. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> actually, that happened to my mom. And this isn't because she didn't take pictures, but like when she was younger, her house burned down. Oh, my so God. So they lost. Th- she's fine, obviously. But like they lost oh, any doc. They life. lost <laughs> any doc. I know. It's just so random, right? Also, because yeah, you're, you're telling a story. Because you're telling a story. You're like, you're like. Oh yeah, it happened to my mom because her house burned down. Like, well, no, so, had nothing yeah, to do with that. Because her house burned down, so they lost any documentation of her as a kid. All the pictures of her as a kid burned down. To this day, I don't know what my mom looked like past like her early twenties. I down. don't know. To be down. Yeah, like, I don't know what she looks like. I mean, she has like one picture of her as like a kid, but it's like I can't even tell if that's actually her. Not but like, I, I, I'm the like same way though. Parents. But just because in Uruguay there was no like cameras or anything, so like there's like one picture of my father when he was a baby. Ooh. There's my my mom's family was like piss poor, so she has zero pictures. Like I don't know what my mom looked like as a baby yeah. at all. Like I don't know what my mom looked like until 18 years old when she had my sister and they took pictures of her baptizing mm-hmm. my sister. Like before that, like there are zero pictures. Like I have never seen a picture of my mom growing up. Yeah. And my father, my father is mad cryptic about his childhood. <laughs> like he is like, hear me out. Why are Hispanic fathers like this? Like why are they so secretive about their childhood? Because they doing some dirty shit. And I don't know. They, why. Don't, they, they have it down low doing some shit. But there's like, like there's very limited pictures of my father growing up. And I remember like my father doesn't talk. Like he talks like he, bits and pieces, right? But like when you ask him about his childhood, he just won't talk. And then one time we were at the mechanic. And my mechanic is also Uruguayan, so him and my dad were just, like, chopping it up. And they were, like, sharing stories about them and their childhood. He's like, oh, yeah, I tell my son this all the time. And I was just sitting there like, this motherfucker never tells me this <laughs> oh, shit. Why are you lying to the family? <laughs> oh, never I actually have a funny shit. story. I don't want to go back to the top. I don't want to, like, uh, stick too long on the, the queer topic. No, it's okay. I remember yeah. I told my Whatever my you're dad, comfortable with, dog. The, the last person to find out was my dad, and he found out by accident. Oh, shit. I don't know if I told you. I told. Yeah, I, I think I knew. So what happened, and this is going to be another, like, haha tragedy, but my car flooded. So, <laughs> well, car I, flooded? My, I flooded Grow my up. car. I flooded my car. How did kids. you do that? No. 
Um, oh. So I was thinking of any to go to a party. I believed you for a second. I was yeah, scared. I was just like, I, I, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> I committed arson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I say flood? I meant burnt. No. So I was actually picking up Vinny to go to a party, as I did. And uh, at this point, mom already knew. The family already knew. Dad didn't know yet. Um, but yeah, so I drove straight into a puddle. Thought my car would float. It did, but it didn't survive. Right. And then um, <laughs> my dad went to salvage whatever he could from the car. Like, you know, like if I forgot anything. Um, and what I forgot was that Vinny had written me like a love note five months in and I left it in the car. Fucking losers. So my dad, <laughs> I've never gotten a love note. <laughs> so Honestly, my dad, every, everything you told that was the gist. <laughs> oh, no yeah. Way. So five months in, I'll wait. Get this I'll wait. Man. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Ooh, I let that one off. Love notes are gay. You Hear me out. Love notes are gay. <laughs> Yo, if you're I, straight. I, you okay, can't do I'll it. I'll let you finish the story, but. My 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 girl in high school used to, not my not the girl I dated. This other girl. Oh, I think the girl I dated too. But this girl used to leave me. Uh, there was this one girl used to leave me like post-it notes inside my locker, <laughs> and then one day someone like saw her leaving one in my locker and like they yelled at her. They were like, "Why oh, are you putting that in his locker? That's not your locker." Like a teacher. <laughs> Why did she know the combination to your locker? She didn't. She was like sticking it up the. Oh, she, oh, yeah, she medication. fucking doing the the little yeah, bat shit. She it was picking, a she picking the lock. She got two like the fucking. <laughs> Right, so anyway, my dad went to look through the car to see if there was anything he could salvage, which, by the way, I want my fucking, like, phone stand back, father. Uh, oh, dad. <laughs> yeah, dad. Um, so then he was, so once, so when we were finally decided to, like, get rid of the car, he couldn't save it. And then I remember we were sitting in the car, and he goes, so by the way, he was like, not that I was, like, looking through your business, but I was trying to see if there was anything in the car I could save, and I found this. The minute I saw the note, my heart dropped straight through my asshole. <laughs> I felt it travel up the colon, through the transverse, down the splenic, into the sig- sigmoid. Right, bro. We got it. You're I wrong. felt it. We got it. You graduated, yeah. bro. Got it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> just had to verify. <laughs> I should have brought my diploma. Not no, I'm kidding. Yeah, through the sigmoid flexure. No. <laughs> and then, um, uh, so he was like, he showed me the note. He was like, I thought this was like a note from Aaron, which is like one of my cousins. And then he was like, and I opened it, and it was not a note from Aaron. Oh, it was from apparently your boyfriend. Got him. And he kind of had the same reaction. <laughs> Honestly, the the, the ironic me. the ironic thing is that I always figured that my dad would actually be like, if if one of my parents was gonna have a problem with it, it would be my mom. Uh-huh. I always figured that was gonna be the case. I figured if anyone was gonna be okay with it, it would be my dad. So I don't know why he was the last one I told. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I guess the only thing he felt bad about was that he was the last one to know. Oh damn, yeah. Yeah. But it was also like <laughs> someone was gonna be. So could have so, been one of your friends though. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't know I told them. But like so like long story yeah, I mean you long story. Yeah, I I didn't tell him though. So like long story short, I mean, he got over it pretty quickly. Him and Vinny actually haven't interacted much just because like my dad works all the time, Vinny works all the time. Um, so they just don't get the chance to talk a lot. But I know that he's okay with it. He asked about him and stuff like that. But that was wild. Like I literally felt What was my, the like rea- like what was the conversation in the car though? Like, oh so like you got oh. him in? Uh, no, he literally... <laughs> no, it's exactly what I said. Like, he was just like... So, I wasn't... All right, let's reenact this. I'm your dad. Yeah, so. sure. No, no, you're me. I'm oh, dad. Sh- no, no, I, no, that gay shit. <laughs> oh, God, God. No, so, <laughs> so he you, was I'm like, you, Kevin, you. you be me. No, I'm kidding. Right. I know it's better than being yourself, so... No. <laughs> no, no, I kind of, we kind of look alike. Yeah, yeah, so he was like... Uh, so, I... He was like... I'm trying to remember. He was like... So, I'm not going through your business, but I was trying to see if there's anything in the car that I could save. What did you find, dad? I didn't speak. Oh, long. you didn't. Okay, <laughs> okay. Your mouth. you gotta let me know. Like, I'm just don't to... say anything. Okay, okay. So okay, he was like, look, like concerned. Recruiting like... agencies. This. Okay, is okay. No, I, I, Wait, I, we're I in the car though, so I'm that. sitting next oh to you. God, this is so okay. Who on the wheel? <laughs> you're, you're driving, or are we, are we parked? I need to know these things. <laughs> the fucking car flooded. What do you think? It's not driving. But you're in your dad's car now. Or are you still? No, we were in the broken car. Wait, actually? Yes. Like sitting like this though. Yeah, I like. He was in the pack. He was in the driver's seat. I was in the. So I'm a little. I'm a little distressed because my car just flooded. No, this was a while after it flooded. Oh, we were, okay, so... You're semi-distressed. Okay, okay. We're going so far off the fucking... All right, go ahead, go ahead. So go anyway, ahead. he was just like, I wasn't you going through just, your business. You were just, come on. Act, act, act it out. I'm about to leave. I'm about to punch that <laughs> camera and leave. So he was like, I wasn't going through your business. Our only asset. But okay, then. he was like, and I found this note. And he was like, he shows me the note, and it says Juju on it. And then he, he was like... <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Tell the story. Tell the story. Go ahead. So he was like... um. And I read it because I was like, I thought it was by, you know, Aaron. Which is oh, it wasn't cousins. by Aaron. Then. Yeah, I don't care. It wasn't by Aaron. And I was like, 
And I remember he was like, I thought this was like from Aaron because the handwriting. It wasn't. And then I was like, yeah, that's not from Aaron. <laughs> and then he was like, and I was like, and I remember just kind of being like, well, now you know. <laughs> Y'all were just staring at each other. <laughs> no, I just remember kind of like looking down. I was just like, well, the Gregorian chant music. It is what it is. Like, I was just kind of like, it is what it is. I mean, because at that point, I'd already told everyone else. So I was like, you know, like, r- go with it, dad. Like, oh, my bad. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oops. But yeah, yeah, like the talking about the fathers just kind of reminded me of that because I was like, that was definitely like one of the funniest things to happen, like being at, like at, being outed by water, like that's, that's wild. Because the note was actually intact too, like the water didn't go that high; it was in the glove compartment. So I was like, the only fucking thing to survive would be the fucking incriminating evidence. <laughs> Did he give you any advice? No. What advice would he have to give me? I don't know. Just relationships. relationships. No, he didn't say. <laughs> yeah, someone. But my no, I remember, I remember being like sixteen. And just having gotten in a relationship, and I was like crying in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Not crying in the bathroom. I was crying like in my bathroom, like oh, the one that's right please. there. Uh, I was crying in my bathroom, like at like two in the morning, because like me and my girlfriend <laughs> just like finished arguing or whatever. And then my dad just comes upstairs, like don 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 knocks on the door. He's like, he's like, he's like, hurry up! I need the bathroom. I was like, I can't right now, dad. I can't. I'm just <laughs> shit in the yard. And, and he was, he was like what the fuck you're 16 like why are you crying there's plenty of fish in the sea there's your whole yeah. and like you know when you're young you think that's the end of your world you're just I like, actually have a this is my whole life I now. actually have a question because <laughs> obviously I didn't start dating until I was 20 mm-hmm. what do young couples argue about what, what do you argue about I don't like, know I was only talk. in one really, I, I, well, well Kevin's only been in the one yeah okay, and but it's I'm been saying, successful I know but like obviously like it wasn't a smooth fucking trip. And I'm saying, like, when you're early, like, obviously, like, now there's shit to be worried about. Nothing. The I feel like there's less like to be worried about when... Years. Huh? The honeymoon phase was, like, two years. Oh, for us? I mean, for us, it we lasted really a long We didn't really argue until, like, college started. And that was because, like, you know, like... Because she was jealous or you were jealous? Huh? Was she jealousy? No, we need to bring her on and talk about right. the, the internet Yeah, let's, 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 let's let her have that. I'm just asking, like, when you're 16, 17, 18, what are you arguing about? Just literally. Well, in the, high school. Okay, so. Oh, like nuggies. So the problem is, <laughs> right, the, the problem is, right, when you're in a high school relationship, right, talking about this, you know, six years removed, you know, um, it's just it's just not a good time. Because, okay, so if you are a pretty woman, a lot of men are are, are seeking after you. If you are, you know, I was a handsome young guy back then. I know hard to believe. I was, I was a good looking guy. Mm-hmm. And so women were after me. So um, when I am in a relationship, I, I am, am straight and narrowed, focused. I don't sway at all. Mm. But, you know, the other person you are with may not see eye to eye with that. And, you know, it's just a lot of like random. You, it, listen, I'm not going to talk about we're not we're not famous yet. Maybe maybe like. And and this happened a lot of years ago. There was a, it's just <laughs> stupid shit. Literally stupid shit. I had a feeling. Like it was just stupid shit. Like yeah. I, like for for lack of like explanation, it was literally like when you're 15 and 16, you argue about shit that does not fucking matter in the real world. Like that that is just the goddamn truth. Yeah, like, I remember. So I remember. It must have been super stupid because I don't it remember must anything. Have been. I remember like if, someone if was. Are there any arguments? I don't remember. I remember someone was like like when you have like you know like. Kindergarten just talking over there. Talking I'm talking to, like this, like my, your, my yeah, mouth. Trust, trust, trust. I, I thought it worked that way. It's not. Okay. <laughs> well, it's directional. Well, it's a good thing I didn't say anything yet. But like, <clears throat> like I remember like people would have, like have like five girlfriends in like first grade. Like you remember like shit like that. Well, I mean, and like motherfuckers would like leave you because someone could run faster than you. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> yo, hear me out. Second grade, if you weren't the fastest on the courtyard, that's it. I used to be like, losing my girlfriend to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> like every, you were the slowest. That's why. And you got the longest legs. That's yeah, crazy. I just can't run fast. They go all the way up and you can't fucking run. That's <laughs> couldn't be me. Yo, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, I just kind of pictured like the same triviality that would be like, uh, like a fucking stupid first grade relationship is probably the same shit you deal with when you're like in high school and y'all ha- that y'all have nothing substantial to argue about like there's no way there's no way that you're like studying for a history exam and y'all got time to argue about something that could possibly be important like bitch i'm over here studying shut up i think like honestly like like looking at it just from like a way more mature perspective and like being so far removed i definitely think it's just when you see your partner every single day Mm. and you're like 15 16 and you're just so accustomed to it every time you're away from them you will be like angry and mm. you will just be like like you know and that's this isn't for everybody it may have just been like a specific case and i'm and there's plenty of people who date in high school and do fine but i definitely think there is a level of like just being so infatuated with it and it being your first you know attempt at love like um 
I will say this. I know it, it, one time this person asked me this. I, I don't remember who it was. Uh, it was somebody like I was trying to get to know or something like that. But they were like, have you ever been in love? And my answer to that was like, from my understanding of love now, that wasn't love. But I was in love with this person. I did care about this person and their well-being. So mm -hmm. I will say I was in love with this person. If I were to hold it up to my standards of love now, I can't say that I wasn't in love with this person. But what I will say, what we had wasn't a healthy it love. Was real. It wasn't like, <laughs> it's just, it's just it, like being in love and love itself is like very different to me. Yeah. And I definitely think my idea of it and again so like when you're 15 or 16 or whatever i'm sure there's not a lot of 15 or 16 year olds listening but maybe a lot of people can relate to this it's like this is your first attempt at love so uh, you let a lot of things slide and a lot of things that are normal because you're not used to what love is so when that's the only love you know you're like oh yeah that's normal for me to argue with my girlfriend every fucking day oh well, yeah it's normal for for me to be jealous it's normal for her to be jealous every day because you don't know love and you think love should be hard yeah, younger me was not about that shit. Like I anyone who I terrible. I I just like I liked the pretty girl. Pretty girl liked me. Easy. I hadn't dated before. And I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's like a a very pretty girl liked me. I thought I was a handsome young man at the time. Uh, a pretty Mongo very combo. pretty girl. Is that what you thought? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a very pretty girl liked me. I I was interested. A, we, you know, trials and tribulations, it didn't work out in the end. It happens. I was 16. I grew out of it. It's whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just like when, a, when I think I definitely. Okay. So, like, we're going to go into my backstory now. Oh my but, God. like, Juan Lore. But, like, yeah. when I was in middle school, like, up until I'll say eighth grade, like, I was always just, like, the little nerdy kid. Um, like, I graduated middle school, like, five, six, maybe. Like, I graduated eighth grade, like, five, seven, maybe. Right? Which is still tall, right? For an eighth grader. Oh, you were talking about your, your height. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. What are these numbers? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. yeah, it's not so, your age. No, no, yeah, yeah. I graduated. <laughs> I was like 5'7, so I was always just like the little nerdy kid. Like, uh, like I was just yeah. the smart kid. That's what I was. Little but then in eighth grade, I started hitting a little girl spirit, so like more women started paying attention to me. And, you know, when you're young and you're before that, you're not really introduced to that type of thing. Like, you're. You're kind of like, oh my god, like people think I'm attracted, like people would want to be with me. So then, fast forward freshman year, I was a little hoe, like at 14 years old, just just hoeing around, being a little idiot, you know, basking in the glory of you know being young and dumb and using the excuse of just being stupid. Um, and then someone was interested in me who I thought was very pretty, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. And then we dated, and it didn't work out. And afterwards, I was just not a, like I just chilled out until college again, and. Wait. So after you broke ap after you broke up, did you go ahead? Did you have like a genuine like refraction period where you were like, I just don't want to date, or you want? I, I deleted. I, mean, I, I deleted social media for two years. Was it? But, but yeah. was that <laughs> okay? But like, there's two, I think there's two types of people after a breakup, based on my observations. There's some people who like the minute they break up, they need a rebound, and like they'll just date and date and date. And we know some people like this from high school who were always in a relationship, and every fucking month it was a different person. It was like it, it was almost like wife swapping that fucking high school. I swear to God, like people were just sharing the same people. It was like there was loose people Small on school. both ends, and then, <laughs> and then like there's other people who like when they break up, they actually take time for themselves. Yeah. So, so when you deleted your socials, was it more of like a fuck love? I don't need to see that shit, or was it like I need time to myself? I need black to get off social screen, media. Nobody talking. It wasn't even like black screen, like it, and it wasn't even like a, like a fuck everybody else. It was just like I know what I'm using this for, and I know it's not healthy. So right. I just need to like step away and like recollect and be on my own for a little bit because when I was on social media, uh, like it would just be to check on what my old partner was doing. Like yeah. it was never for me. Um, like it would drive me crazy. Like I, I would see people post things or like post with her and I would be like, I would met, I would literally <laughs> message people like, like, like one time this dude posted like that they were all together. And like I met, like it was bad, you know. I was 15, you know, very far removed from it. But like I messaged the person, and I was like, "Hey, are you with so and so?" And they were like, "Yeah." And like I got pissed off. I like I sent them a text. I was like, "Yo, like that's fucking." Cr it was bad. It was bad. Okay, mm -hmm. like it was just not the coolest shit to do. But I just realized, you know, like I took a step back and I was like, "Yeah, this is definitely not healthy. This is definitely not the right thing to do." Um, I'm definitely like approaching this very immaturely. We're both approaching this very immaturely. So let oh, me he just. Was chilling. You're the one that fucking. No, no, there. they were both. It was bad. Oh, okay. It was like it was like. <laughs> I'm only gonna talk about myself because I'm here and I, like yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. have the chance to defend themselves or anything. Yeah. So I don't want to talk about what other people did to me or what was done. Like, 
it's whatever it's it's water under the bridge like this was seven years ago um but i was definitely like i i'm not handling this maturely it's not being handled maturely what's being like posted is like crazy like i'm definitely using this in the wrong way so i just took the i was just like i'm gonna delete social media and then i didn't download it again until january so like i deleted it sometime like at the end of my sophomore year and then i didn't re-download it until the end of senior year like when prom and stuff was happening oh, i prom. yeah like i i took like because i wanted to like post prom stuff or like graduation stuff so i think i downloaded it again oh no no you know why i downloaded it because i had gone to uh uh dc to talk about uh to like advocate for daca like deferred action oh uh, yeah yeah and so like i wanted to like uh one of the con the congressman that i had that had invited me had uh had like posted about me so i was like oh i want to see the post and stuff like that so uh, that's I think, why i re yeah. i i re-downloaded social media and like i started posting on instagram again but up until like for two years for like a year and a half i was all social like i didn't know what the fuck was going on i didn't have anything like snapchat instagram or twitter like i was just i went ghost for like two years yeah, yeah. I definitely. Sorry, were you gonna say something? No, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you, sorry, you've go ahead. been. Oh, sorry. Like, and co- college was a lot. Like, at least the first year was kind of crazy because, like now, like looking back, a lot of people weren't as happy as they made themselves seem to be on social media, and I hated it because I was like, "Yo, am I literally the only one that's not having like an amazing time yeah. right now?" And social media was not healthy at all, especially being. Well, I mean, the first year was, was like, dorming, but then second year was a commuter, so it made it even worse. Like, <laughs> no, commuters don't really be hanging out with nobody. They don't have friends. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Yeah. So, hear me out. Say <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> Hug your commuter lonely. friends, bro, because that shit is so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so lonely. Like, And you have blocks where, like, I can't go home, and I don't know anybody, so I'm just sitting here for three hours at it's the like, like cafeteria before going to the next class. It was terrible. And, like, that, too, like, especially, like, I mean, if we got Sophia here, we could talk about that more. We should bring her on. She should yeah. actually be our next guest. Okay. Yeah, that could be cool. Um, But it was, one, it was hard to get to her just because of her school is in the mountains. There was one bus, and if I were to go, I would see her one day. Right. And the bus was, like, it left at night. And then the day I have to come back, it leaves in the morning. So it was kind of like, it was one, that was really bad. So you'd just be there for the night, basically. Well, no, I would have, like, Saturday, but then Sunday would have to leave, like, really early. Right. Like, for uh-huh. me, I, one, I hate traveling. Right. And from Boston to get to her was, like, one, three hours. So three hours, three hours. It was, it was a bunch of traveling for, like, what didn't seem like a lot of time to, like, mm-hmm. see her. And then seeing, you know, people, like, in happy relationships, like, being at the same college or stuff like that. It was just kind of like... Takes a toll. Yeah, it was like, this shit is fucking ass. Bro. And especially because, like, I went to like I went to school with, like... I, I know people that are, that are like, Rutgers, right? Like, they yeah. went to school with people they know. At least they have a basis, right? But, I mean, like, me and you, like, nobody went to, like, the I first mean, college, right? Before you transferred? Yeah, no. Arcadia? Everyone... I remember I came to... Ar- I When we did, like, uh, the... What was it, like... Career Choice fair day? or whatever. Career, yeah. Like, Choice Day or whatever the fuck oh, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Decision Day. Yeah, whatever, yeah Decision Day. When we did a, did decision day, and I told people I went to Arcadia, every single person was like, "Where the fuck uh-huh. is that?" I was like, "Bro, like, <laughs> come on!" Like, and then I went to Arcadia. No, then I went. I went to TCNJ, and I would tell people I was a transfer student. Anytime I said that I went, I can't. I went to Arcadia. They were like, "Oh, that's such a good school." I was like, "How the fuck do they know about that place?" <laughs> but when even me, like people that went to high school with us, went to Rutgers too. But I, 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 from high school, like other than the people that like I would actively go see. I would never run it. I was the I was one of two people from our high school that went into engineering, and Rutgers New Brunswick is fucking huge. Yeah. So like, it's not like, it's not like we're on even on the same campus. Like most of my friends never even stepped foot on the same campus I was on. So, well, I ran into somebody I knew from high school once, like just running into them, like just like casually, like unplanned. I ran into one person, and even then, I had zero classes with him. Yeah, no. So the I was still alone. Switched crazy going oh. to college. I definitely want to touch up on this, like when it happens. But like, I from college, I went from being the extroverted person. Talking like, to the our, more. Sorry, and co- in high school, I was the extroverted person, and like, damn. You hit his I'm chin. just saying, push it chin, forward. He's fine. <laughs> I think I think they'll hear it's me just fine. No, but it was super anymore. low though. Oh my bad. All right. Yeah. All right. That's why we need Restart. a producer so the producer can tell you this, and now you're fucking. I want you in the yellow. <laughs> Yeah, I want you in the yellow, Mister. Yeah, I literally. <laughs> we literally. need yellow. All right. That's why we need. Produ- like I'm telling you, bro. Running it back. I mean, right. listen. However much is paying. No. 
the free experience. <laughs> we'll give you. We'll you know what? We'll talk a, after. We'll talk <laughs> after. We'll pay you an, an exposure. Yeah. <laughs> um, As in, I'll, I'll flash my dick to you every two weeks. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Not you, but I just. <laughs> All right. Because exposure, exposure. You got it. It's a on. joke, guys. This feels like that feels like a targeted joke, no, no. given <laughs> what we talked about today. No. Not a targeted uh, joke, you freaking so jerks. So, anyway. This was just a joke. What happened was, like... Commuter life. The dynamic changed for me a lot because I went from well, what it felt like the extroverted person uh-huh. in high school to being the introverted person. And my girlfriend went from being the introverted person to the extroverted person. So, even even that was, like, I'm, I'm not, like, having a good at time as yeah. her. I was, like, like, yeah, I was, like, fucking jealous of that. I was, like, yo, like, I don't feel... Like not welcome. It was just like, I I missed what I what I had before. Mm. I feel that so heavily actually because I remember one time I was talking to my lab mate. Shout out my old lab mate. Shout out Carlos. I, uh, Carlos be listening sometimes. We should get him on. He's a good guy. Hi, he told me to to uh, get on. I'm gonna get him on. We're gonna get you on, Carlos. <laughs> if you're listening, if you listen to today, message me and be like I listened, All and right. then I'll if know. You got to this point. If you got to this point, <laughs> but yeah, um, we're, we're two hours twenty minutes in. But I remember I remember telling him, like. Like, ah, oh, fuck. I, I like, cause I was an extrovert in high school. Let's say, like, I was really friendly. I was nice to people. Like, I wasn't. But like in college, like, I was the opposite. Cause I didn't really have friends. I, I was really like to myself. I really didn't go out that much. Um, and so like I remember one time I was talking to him about it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, like you're an introvert." And I'm like, "That's crazy." Cause like no one back home would call like, me that. Don't call me that, bro. But like no <laughs> one back home would really call me that. Right. People think like I'm loud and rambunctious. And like I remember one time I told him I was like, "Oh my bad, I'm just loud." He's like, "Juan, you're not even loud." And I'm like. This is crazy. Like, no one at home would ever describe me this way that, like, these people are meeting me as. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, it's just funny because, you know, it is a difference of, like, living and shit. Yeah. I mean, that that's really how I felt, too. Like, I went my entire, like, high school career thinking I was extroverted because, like, I knew everyone and everyone knew me. You know what I mean? Like, pretty much anyone in the But high school are... Yeah. I'm talking about from a high school perspective because this is also where the, the, the change happened. Yeah. Like this, because high school was also where I was informed that I wasn't, and mm-hmm. that's what confused me. Because I was like, "Give me any student in here, and I can have a very nice, fun conversation with them." <laughs> and I thought that's what introvert. I thought that's what extroversion was. And then I remember talking with like some of the band guys, and everyone was just like, "What the fuck are you on about? You're an introvert." And I was like, <laughs> "No, I'm not." And I was like, did, like, "Did I actually come off as introverted? I swear to God, I was extroverted. Like, what about me was introverted?" I feel like. You had your moments where you could talk a lot, but there was a lot of moments where you would just comment on something and then go back to just like <laughs> chilling. <laughs> I don't remember. I honestly remember myself always kind of like, I don't know. I thought I thought myself as more like um, out there than that. I don't remember being that kind of person. Well, I, you know what? Like now, like thinking about it, I don't really have like a example. I mean, yeah. obviously not. It's so long, eight years ago. But like, <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> four years ago, guys, calm down. Yeah, but I'm saying like it was just crazy being because like. It was like Apoku and Guillermo, like all the fucking guys in the band were like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, you're introverted as fuck. And then I was like, well, that's coming from like one of the most extroverted person people out there. I've been spat on. Oh, I've been sorry, spat sorry. on. We're in the splash zone, people. Dude, I'm, I'm always in the splash zone when, when we're <laughs> in this podcast. You guys, yeah. we're, we're about to call it the wet cast. No cap. <laughs> Not the wet God, cast, damn. please. <laughs> Cancel it now. The, that's the name of the show. Cancel it now. Yeah, that's the title <laughs> of this that's episode. The title the wet cast. Episode. Was it the rain or me? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I definitely think uh, we could probably we could probably start wrapping up. We're like two and a half hours. In. Yeah, <laughs> this is the this longest a, one. I yeah, like this, is, this is why we need to have oh, guests. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we won't have you back in. <laughs> and when we're huge. Right. No, I mean honestly, I mean even with um, the new job that I'm gonna have now, which we did not talk about that at all, and that's honestly probably for the better because I haven't started yet and don't want to say anything. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, count my eggs before they hatch. Yeah. So it's probably better we didn't talk about the current job, but um. Even with my new job, I'm still gonna be a free around this time. Let's go. It's like if you guys, I, mean, I don't. Depends how well this episode received. Right. We're, we're we're men of the people. That, mean, I, that means it's on you to promote it. <laughs> oh, no. If I if I ruin this episode, I'm never coming. Listen, back. if we don't get to 200 followers after this episode, you're never coming. Y'all back. are just haters. Oh, come on. You gotta tell everybody you know, because I'm sure there's plenty of people that you know that aren't following. I'm the already about to page. get you guys a, a new a new viewer. No, Vinny no, said we that he's gonna start followers. watching it now. We need new followers. I'll like, tell him to follow. At you. least a million. Right, right. No, I'm joking. If we get to 175, we might have you back. This does not fall. If you're really extroverted, like tell everybody to fall. <laughs> I feel so targeted right now. <laughs> I might just not come back on my own volition. Like fuck y'all. 
Listen, the new studio space might not be even big enough to have a guest list. <laughs> so unless you, you come with your own space. <laughs> Honestly, my ba- if you can somehow fit all this equipment, my basement's actually pretty fucking large. Damn. Producer? Listen, we might, we might start moving shit around. We might have to talk to you off camera. Not sure. Can. No, I'm joking. I'm, joking. But <laughs> we'll I'm dead ass. No, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but next time, we'll, 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 we'll get into Wait, so are y'all trying to have like a guest like every episode? No, 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 no. Yeah, I was about to say, no. that's a fucking... That's a, that's that's tough. Every that's so rough. often though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like well, I, I don't even cool. mind like one one yes one no or like it's, it's not even like we're like it has to be <laughs> one, one yes one no. Yeah. Or it doesn't yes even have no. to be like whenever <laughs> just like schedules align and we could have a guest like perfect. Yeah. If not, then like it's cool too. Like yeah. me and Kevin have been trucking for seven episodes before this, so yeah. we're we're yeah. chilling. But you know it's nice to have a guest. Cause it's it, like a new perspective. It changes the yeah, edge perspective. It changes up the conversation. You just be talking about like yo, like I have this story where like. I went through a flood and I saved Batman or something like. Damn, okay, we have a lot of people that, that now we have a lot of people can with you crazy tell him, can stories. You tell him? Like that didn't hit the way you thought it did. Go ahead, tell. Oh, uh, I actually this is actually a true story. I still have on my phone screen that recorded <laughs> that clip from when you made that horrendous joke on the first episode about the condoms. <laughs> and, I thought it was a funny joke. No, it was so funny to me watching it because I was actually I was I was a visual listener. Visual oh, listener. Visual I was a visual watcher. I mean, isn't that kind of redundant? Yes, no. but... If you're watching it, it obviously, it it's matter. fucking visual. It's sticking. It's sticking. No, so I just remember, like, Juan said it, and Kevin's eyes slit. Like, they narrow. He goes, uh-huh. Kevin, just on that, <laughs> first, on that first episode, Kevin didn't laugh at any of my jokes. Someone literally... They weren't... Okay. No, no. Some were funny. But I'm one of my coworkers was like, was like, your co-host just doesn't give you anything when you, like, make a joke. <laughs> he just looks at you, and I'm like, hey, the motherfucker doesn't laugh. At least Bro, fake it. That shit uh-huh. took me out. I, he was like, uh-huh. No, but, like, that, hey, that hit was the way. selling point. A lot of people were like, yo, I, I love how you react to Juan talking. And I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Because I was such, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a tornado. No, I mean, Bro, it, t- it took me a nothing, second to, like, warm no, up. Because, like, nothing, yo, looking at a camera is so weird to me. It's no, so weird to Nothing me. to me was funnier. I, I forget which episode it was where Kevin deadass went, this is Juan's podcast because I haven't said shit. <laughs> oh. You were, y'all yeah, were like, just, but I... <laughs> I'm Listen, not even here to demonize no, no. you. I'm just saying that shit this was is, so no, funny. This is how I know I'm introverted because Kwan would be like, yo, just jump in there. And I'm like, bro, you're still talking. No, no. <laughs> that, I watched that part. The one podcast that somebody said that, that you said that. Uh-huh. I watched it back and I was like, in the clips, it might look that way, but if you listen to the whole podcast, that motherfucker's talking the whole time. Oh no, yeah, I people will I take the clips and be like, "This motherfucker not talking." Like, no, motherfucker, listen to the podcast. <laughs> you think I, I'm I, talking for an hour and a half alone? Maybe. Yes, I could do it. <laughs> I maybe, believe it. You could. Honestly, that's <laughs> yeah. what you should do. You should like on the side, also just do like soliloquies and monologues. <laughs> just have them written down. Right yeah, just have them written no. down and just be like chapter one. We actually had that issue because Juan, like, he was like, "Damn, you have the same co-host, like you have the same guest <laughs> every single week." Oh, one of my Cause, coworkers cause, said that cause, to me. Yeah, because we, because he does, he did the main hear me out. Because I was like, I don't really even say that phrase. I don't even have any like. Mm. I had to like think of that. I had like, to actually help him. Brainstorm. I had to train him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you know what's the worst part? <laughs> We got thousands of views off of him saying, hear me out. When oh, I'm yeah, the, I remember y'all posted the Kevin factor. When I'm the one who trained this motherfucker, and he over here talking about some, it's the Kevin buff. When well, the, you know, student, the student when becomes the, the master. The becomes it's not the, the master. He, he, he copied my notes. <laughs> Wait, has Quan ever actually just told you yes. what to say, and then you said it? Because yes. I know I, I have seen the episodes where you guys will be like, Okay, do the hear me out for the for the. Like you, you guys <laughs> no, will. This is you. You guys are literally like, okay, this one's for the TikTok, whatever. Like, I get that, but has he ever just straight up been like, say this, and then you yes, say it, and yes, then he's because, like, okay, because it became an issue where like he was the full <laughs> face of the Instagram and the TikTok. He was like, bro, we gotta get you. We gotta. And I don't get like you that because this is Kevin's right. show as much as it is mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and like, like, there's no there's no hear me out without. Kevin, right. so it's just I'm, here. I'm me- the out. It's, it's just, just here. It's not even. It's just a hook. Like it's just an H. <laughs> ear so, me out. You're the ear me out. <laughs> I'm the yeah. H. I'm the H and half of the M. He's this the other is, M. This is how you guys should introduce yourselves next podcast. Be like, I'm, and he's ear, ear me, me out. out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. He's me out. <laughs> but yeah. it, it definitely took me a while right. to warm up to like the idea. Like oh, talking to the good dude. I'm literally yelling into it. No, you're not. How am I not you're yelling? Not. You're this not. Is, yeah. I this want is, you to know you're not. This like, is I don't care what you're telling me. Throat. No. You know what's wild? This is the longest episode that you guys have, and. I don't know if this is actually something I've ever said before, but one the the thing I like physically the least about me is actually my voice. Oh uh-huh. shit! So I feel like having this two hour, two and a half hour video of me talking 
As I'm gonna. Uh, my ears are gonna bleed. It gets. You no. get used to it. Even yeah, like yeah. even now, I don't watch our YouTube videos. You know? Wow, you're crazy. Like not the whole thing. Like I, I'll watch oh, the I've clips back. I watch the clips back a lot. But like I personally like. I've always just been that way where like I don't like to I like to consume my own work even because you know I did a lot of streaming and shit and like even making my own YouTube videos mm-hmm. outside of Hear Me Out and I just like it's like this like not even like a level of insecurity it's not even that it's just like there have been times in the past where I've said this on the podcast where like people have viewed my work not in the fact like not in the eyes of trying to appreciate it but in the eyes of trying to make fun Yeah. so it's like I don't want to like consume it more than I have to like Plus, I don't watch our YouTube ch- like channel because I like I watch the entire video to clip out. Like I watch the whole thing to then get the clips out. Wait, are wait are the YouTube videos you posted actually like like you you cut stuff out? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Oh, I was about for, the say, for the yeah, clips, for the clips, for the actual like, like okay. Little, I was about to say because that's so episode? seamless. Like nah. I like I ne- I was about to say if you're like jump cutting and shit, I could not have told. We only have one camera. Like yeah. we like the goal is to have cameras like for everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, like every individual has oh, his own camera, like and then you have like an overview so that when someone does talk, the camera's facing that. Put the camera right above our heads, and it's just like <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, literally scalps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like my bald spot is showing. Yeah, I don't listen. have one, but listen, we're gonna wrap it up here because yeah. now we're, we're going on too long now. I, right. I'm getting tired. No such. I thing. might share all my stories now, and we don't want to keep Julian. Here Demon hours is coming up. Yeah, but <laughs> listen, thank you, Julian, for being our first yeah, guest. You were a you. wonderful first oh, guest. You are a wonderful first guys. guest. We're Very really happy, happy to have a friend here yep. that has like a good story to tell. And yeah. you know, if you ever want to come back, you might have to schedule us. But you know, you're, we're more than happy to have <laughs> yeah, you I back. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed. I did. Telling I hope stories. you tell your friends. Yeah. I hope you listen to this back and like get used to the voice. I know that's something that I had to um, do. Bro. Like, <laughs> Kevin has to get used to look good being in front of the camera because he's he's always been a behind the scenes guy. Right. Now I put him in front of a camera and I told that's him do your hard. best. Yeah. <laughs> if someone did like a time lapse of this entire video, it would just me be going. Yeah, literally. Because <laughs> I've been looking at YouTube the entire time, so like I've I've probably looked at the camera like twice. So the entire like video is just me. That's why I want a producer, <laughs> so I don't have to look at the fucking audio shit. Because like I realize I don't look at the camera that much. I I'm mostly staring I don't. at the audio. If stuff. you look at if you look at my clips, I remember. Um, I think Sophia said that she was like, every time you finish, you immediately look for Juan, like you're looking for his <laughs> affirmation. <laughs> yeah. It's just every that way. It's only us two, so like we yeah, have yeah. to. Like, yeah. cause I no you, cause you do it. You like stay looking at the camera until it switches to me. But as soon as I finish my sentence, Damn. I do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, honestly, I think this is born of the Zoom era, where like it would be really uncomfortable. Like you know, like you would be talking to like the teacher or something, but you're still looking at them on the camera, not directly into the camera. But yeah, even yeah, on yeah, FaceTime, you know I mean? like I'm not gonna fucking be on a Zoom call with someone and go like this. I'm looking at them in the lens, not the fucking camera. Like, you know what I mean? Usually when I'm on FaceTime, I just look at myself. Wow. Work. (laughs) That's just you. But listen, (laughs) listen, this is the third time I'm going to try wrapping up this guy. Yeah, let's wrap up for real. Cut the cameras, dead ass. (laughs) Thank you guys for tuning in. Please come back next week. If you're new to the the videos, please subscribe. Please show us love on Instagram. We appreciate all the comments. As much as we might disagree with some of them, please keep commenting. Please keep watching. Please keep showing love. This is Hear Me Out the Podcast. This was Juan. Yes, this is Kevin. Thank and you all for the love. Uh, and and yes, this is Julian. <laughs> Shout out Julian. probably not be back. No, you will. You will. No, you will. no, no. We, they love you. No. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We we'll don't see. know they love you yet. Yeah. You're, you're, you know. It's you, a you, could be in yeah. the, you could be in the, in the HMO <laughs> ecosystem. <laughs> the right. ecosystem. The extended right. universe. <laughs> all right, y'all. But peace the fuck out. Have a good day. Wow. Have a good rest of the week. We'll see y'all next week. Bye.